This episode is brought to you by our friends at Milwaukee Tools. Outdoor power equipment gives you the power to clear, cut, and maintain the outdoors without the petrol headaches. No pull starts, no engine maintenance, no mixing petrol and oil. Book a test drive now at milwaukeetools.com.au. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Rick's. Rick's is an Australian lifestyle brand founded with a mission to transform the eyewear industry by creating carefully crafted eyewear that inspires confidence. Everybody should be able to enjoy a touch of luxury and the confidence it brings. See the world differently today. Head online now at rickseyewear.com.au and check it out. Righto, let's get into the show. Well, mate, welcome back to Melbourne. Is it good to be back? Great to be back, man. It's... uh nothing like it honestly even if even with the overcast weather that we've got right now it's still better so i, I mean i love it so it's always good to get back here and, and spend a bit of time mate thanks so much for your time i um i'm that excited as you know osmerican aces we've only had i think we've had benny graham eric decker's joined us uh, we've had benny live once okay. so you're the second uh nfl or third nfl player but in person, I just said to you, I didn't want to go online. I've been waiting <laughs> all year for some of you boys to come back. So it's great that you're back in town and what a season you had. It's, mate, congratulations as well. NSC champs, uh, Benny Graham. I remember we, so I flew back from the States uh, not long ago, obviously, for he does armchair experts. Yeah. And yeah. I got the opportunity to fill in for him because the great Jeez, man was over been, there. That would have been nice. And it yeah. was like so much fun because I watch every game and yeah. we're just pumping up the game and, I just noticed on the broadcast that it was like they'll be the fourth player ever to play in this yeah. Super Bowl and yeah. be the first ever to maybe win know, it. And we still uh, haven't won one yet, so it was, we've got to go back there and try to do it again. I think so. you got the list. <laughs> I think you got the list to do it, mate. We'll see how it goes. How is um how how, how are you feeling? Like we, we're gonna just so everyone listening and watching is gonna go through. I want to talk about the season then Super Bowl, but right now I think we're three weeks. Yeah, post. three weeks post. Yeah, how are you feeling? Still pretty raw. So uh, it's tough to it's tough to have those you know those games and stuff and obviously what an experience to be part of but uh, yeah I mean it's tough you know you 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 spend your whole season trying to gear up for that and and get yourself prepared and um, you just fall short so um, yeah it's a it was a great game to be part of I mean uh, we were right there for the taking and um, yeah it just kind of. Just, you just fall just a bit short, unfortunately, and you just kind of have to take it on the chin and that kind of maybe drives you going into into next season. So, um, you know, it was uh, it was an unbelievable experience, as I said, and, you know, it's, um, you know, I'm tr- probably struggling to put the words together half the time because it's, uh, yeah, just the, the spectacle behind it all is just unbelievable. Yeah. I, I'm actually, I'm not going to go back. Let's stay on it. We'll go through the season because <laughs> everyone's going to just stay on the Super Bowl. You may as well. But it was, it was crazy. And we're all following you and we weren't sure whether you're going to play and you don't really get, you know, it's, you're just following Twitter, you're seeing social media, you're going, is a great man going to get up? Yeah. Um, talk to me about that, you know, when you were out and when you got injured, what was going through your head? Well, I think we spoke just then off air, week 13. Yeah, week or, 13, I think it was. It was the uh, it was the Giants game late in the season and uh, yeah, yeah. Tore, the, uh, tore the deltoid muscle on the inside of the ankle and that's what pretty, pretty severe high ankle sprain too. So uh, I was definitely fighting an uphill battle to, to get back. Um, the original diagnosis was that I was going to have to have surgery. So I thought, season's done all over Red Rover type thing and then got a second opinion and they said, look, we can we can leave it alone. Um, it's going to be a pretty intense rehab if you're going to try and get back. And um, in the end, I think they said to me it was probably good to be a 10 to 12 weeker, um, but I got back in, you know, trying to get back and got back in about eight or nine because I knew what the situation yeah. was and stuff. And it was, it was pretty intense. Um, and yeah, just kind of had to grind it out as best I can, rely on the boys to, you know, win each game. And um, yeah, I was able to get back and, and give myself a give myself a run at it. So, you know, a couple of good plays, not so good play. And um, obviously, you know, some things don't work out in your favor. But as I said, what a occasion to be a part of. And um, you know, as I said, I really hope we can get back there and actually go one better. Oh, you will with your list. You got, yeah, we, we'll talk about the list in a moment, <laughs> mate. But let's go back to the injury. So, like, I didn't know that. And I, and, and I've got two questions here. One's yeah. about how quick the 
you bloody NFL players turn your injuries around. You yeah. know, 12 weeks, always eight, and a, yeah. a hamstring's one week. I don't know how you, <laughs> how they do it, these wide receivers. They must be lying. <laughs> They've got to be lying. Uh, they must be just tight. Um, but your play, that's one of the plays of the year for a, um, for a punter. Oh, uh, they, I wouldn't like, go that far. <laughs> but, like, but no one would think about it. Like, I, I think anyway, in my yeah. personal opinion – the American punters, they wouldn't think to do that. No. You've got the AFL background. Yeah. At what point did instincts just kick in and you go? As soon as that thing got blocked. As soon as that thing got blocked and I was like, where is it? Where is it? And I saw it bounce to my left. I was like, I've just got to do whatever I can to like try and get it down there and, and see what happens. So instincts just kick in. Um, obviously, it was a nice to get the old little one, the one hand oh, scoop up. Nice. And I think I think I maybe dropped the bloke too on my right, which is nice, like a little bump, little, little bump on the shoulder there to make myself feel good. And then literally one second later, I'm hobbling off with a destroyed ankle, and who knows? But uh, it was a pretty, it was pretty cool. It would have been a bit better if I got the first down, you know, because then we would have been able to hold on to the ball. But um, I mean, the American fans were pretty happy with it, so I guess I can take that. Which oh, is they good. should be. I don't think the Giants fans were happy <laughs> nah, with you, weren't they? Nah. Getting into you, and you gave nah, them a mouthful back. I was giving it back, so you know, obviously, you know, for those people out there, it's uh, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but uh, yeah, I gave a bit of shit back to the crowd. I don't really like those Giants fans, so I just, <laughs> yeah, that's all there is. I to mean, it. you've just busted your ankle, and they're still getting into you. Like, they come were. on, they and were. They were giving me a hard time about it, and I was like. I'm literally on the back of a cart about to get strolled <laughs> off here and you're you're physically abusing me. I'm like, <laughs> if this, I'm going to give it back to these pieces of shit. And that's, yeah. that's what I said. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and then Fox Sports and Fox have just written They're it all up. Over it. They could all have over talked it. about the bloody clean scoop. They could have. I mean, instead, they wanted to talk about my vulgar language, so I was just like, all right, whatever. I think any oh, – it's brilliant, mate. I actually didn't even know that until my prep for the potty because I was I thought it would be something about how clean the scoop and the ground ball, something that I used nah, to really struggle with. Straight to the language, mate. Straight to the language. <laughs> Did you think about – so I want to break this um, play down because I was watching it live. You guys are 21-0 up. You're yep. flogging them. You're in the end zone, so you're tucked up deep, which must go through – must be a really tough kick. Yeah. It gets smothered. You pick the ball up. Mm. I thought you were going to do like a banana or something. Yeah, I'm not allowed to kick it again. So you're not allowed to kick it. Yeah, because I was right. past the line of scrimmage technically. So the line of scrimmage was like on the minus two yard line. Yes, yeah, so, so by the that. time I so by the time I picked up the ball, I was already past the yard line, so I couldn't kick it again. If, if you I did was, kick it, what would have happened? Uh, well, we'd pre- play the- we would have had to replay it. Um, from the zero? from the Probably from the one. So half the distance of the goal line and then play it from the one. So I would have had to do the exact same thing again. Um, that's what most likely would have been, the I think, that they would have done. I think the other thing they could do is they could potentially um, take it from wherever the ball finished and then they get like 10 yards, I think, if that's the like 10 yards back if they wanted to. But – I reckon they would have taken it from the minus one for sure and yeah. maybe maybe re kick it. So that would yeah. have been that would have been the situation for sure. Yeah, because I was uh, just yeah, I mean I kind of knew that, but I wasn't sure with just th- that part yeah. of the ground. I thought about it, don't get me wrong. Oh, you I could thought say about, you were- I thought about like kick like putting it on my boot and just seeing if I could kick it. Um but yeah, in the end I knew that that was not going to be the right play because we would have got penalised for it. So I just tried to run down for the first down. I think I was probably like a yard short. So yeah, was, we were close. I was close, but um not close enough. Very close. And your ankle, you didn't really, you couldn't see, but it was a big hit. Yeah. So the guy came in, he may have actually got me late too. Like was, I may have already stepped seven. out of bounds, but I'm not really too sure. But I've, my last step, I've like gone to like just protect myself and the ball a little bit. And I've taken the step outside. And as I've got hit, like just all the lower body momentum has gone forward. Lower upper body has just gone back and just foot got stuck in the ground. and. Wow. Just can complete just rip of the inside of the ankle. So, yeah, man, I, I was walking off. I was like, actually, I probably, might, I think I was hobbling off, and I was like, oh, it's just a little sprain. I'll be right. And then I tried to take a couple of steps, and I just like couldn't put any pressure yeah. on it. And then every time I took a step, I was like inverting. I was like, wow, well, all right, we're in a bit of trouble here. We're in a bit of trouble. It was going through your head at the moment that, that like, because you guys would have been on a heater. Yeah, you undefeated. We're fine. You're undefeated. We had one loss, I think. One we loss. lost to the um, the commanders a couple of weeks earlier, but we were eleven and one. We were flying, yeah. And the Giants were like this team that like were playing good and had a good record, and everyone's like, oh, they could be, they could, they could get us. And then obviously, as you saw, you know, up early, twenty-one nothing, kind of early second quarter, and we've got the ball again and. Feeling pretty good, but um, yeah, it's just 
a lot of things happen in a short period of time, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of the season, I think you were 13th, I think you were 13th ranked at the start of the season, I read yep. when I was doing talking about the Super Bowl. Yep. So, you know, you're in the top third, but you're not really spoken about. Did you know internally as a group from just everything, all the work you'd been putting in, Hertz as your quarterback, we'll talk about him in a second. AJ Brown's over there. You've got a lot of players on defense come in. Did you guys internally start, you know, w- at what point did you start thinking, oh my God? Oh, we've got a powerful team here. No, can- I think we thought that even before the season had started, to be honest. Like we knew we knew the talent that we had and we knew the coaching staff that we had um to make us think that we're yeah, we're good enough. Yeah. Um so, you know, we had we had the we had the talent there, we had the scheme behind it, I think, to be able to make it work. And um we knew that we knew that like if we we had a good game against Detroit week one, you know, obviously kind of test ourselves and that, and we thought we'd probably cruise past them, but they obviously fought back and it was a pretty hard fought victory in the end. And then we gave uh, Minnesota a, a beat down in, in the second week. Um, we, we felt pretty good about them because they were a pretty talented team. And I think people had them in the top, inside the top 10 of like having a run, you know, at, at, at the big dance and um yeah, things just kind of just kept rolling. Yeah. Didn't they? They oh, just yeah. it was just like momentum's a huge thing, I think, in the NFL. And um we had the talent there. There was questions on obviously Jalen, like is he the quarterback? Da 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 da. But I think everybody can safely say that they can put that to bed. Oh yeah. And um yeah, we just we just played some really good football, honestly. Oh you did. It, it was so I, I put money on Dallas at the start of the year okay. in your division. I don't like that very much. I know you anyway. don't. I know. At the start of the year and I'm going. Hey, they've got a good team. They, they do. They, I know. They, they've got I great know. talent and they had a great year the year before. And I think the expectation was was Dallas. pretty high for them. Well, you yeah. even money at the start That's of the right. year. But um, yeah, it's only, you know, a few weeks in, you're starting to go, oh, I think that bet's done. Mm. And all my, yeah, all the attention was like how, like I could, no one was really getting ears. And, I, and even- even all the way through, I mean, you now we go to when you're injured, you would have been it would have been a very enjoyable watch, knowing that if you can get your body right yeah. for Super Bowl, because you just you know it was just, it was a perfect yeah. like it was almost perfect like it was for you sure. just smoked teams yeah for it sure was, wasn't like, like, you wouldn't we have had any lost a couple I think in the later but obviously it wasn't really anything to be worried about like Jalen wasn't playing to start off with and we had the backup quarterback in but we knew we were in a good position um, obviously we wanted to try and get that number one seed so it was a bit. You know, like we were, yeah. we were leaving it to the last minute to make that happen. But, you know, we, we knew we were in a pretty good spot. Um, you know, I was obviously that NFC championship game was definitely the one that I was most worried about because San Francisco oh, are yeah. legit and they were they were lit, they were probably the hottest team in, in the NFL. And as you said, they weren't even anywhere near us in the end, which was which was awesome. But um yeah, like it was nerve wracking a little bit, but at the same time I knew that we were good enough to obviously really make a deep run at it and yeah, it worked out in the end. Oh yeah, it did. And that, I mean, that's, that San Fran game, like, yeah. cause the anticipation was, like, it was probably the game of the year. Yeah. It was almost a Super Bowl, really. Yeah. And you're like, what happened to their quarterback room is just bizarre. Yeah. Um, you guys walked all over them and then off, off we go to the Super Bowl, which is um, like, you would be, it'd be a unique, I, I'd imagine first game back, mm. did you know you were playing? Because it's a two week, like you know, you finish the NFC yeah. your champs, you have the week off. They go to the Pro Bowl, and all us fans are watching. We have to wait <laughs> another week to the no. game, so there's like two weeks of hype. Yeah. And the questions like, yeah. are you, especially in Aussie, you know, is Aaron playing? Yeah. Um, is Jalen's shoulder fine? Is yeah. Mahomes' ankle fine? There's yeah. just so much going on. on. Yeah. The hype's um, real. The hype's so the hype real. is real. Yeah. Did you have the hype? You know, how were you feeling? I was. Uh, I was good. I like. I had practiced um, properly with the group leading into the game, which was great. Um, I just had to prepare as if I was going to be playing. So uh, I found out on the Thursday, I think, going into the game um, that I was I was going to be the guy. And um, obviously, you know, that was, that was pretty good. And I'd done everything in the lead up. So, you know, you can't really hide that stuff um, necessarily, you know, but you try and keep it away from ex- any external sources and stuff. Inter- but internally, yeah, they would they they'd back me in to get it done, which was good, and um, it gave me enough chance to obviously prepare properly and and everything like that. And um, 
yeah, it was good. It was kind of good to it was good to know into the lead up, but obviously them actually telling me was was obviously the bit of icing on the cake, which was which was great. So um I did everything I can obviously to get back and and do what I needed to do and it was good. How is the ankle? Uh it's been better. Out of a hundred percent, what would you oh, I'd probably say I'm probably going about 75, 80 yeah. right now. So um if I if I was in an AFL if I was in an AFL environment for sure I, I wouldn't like yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be playing can't turn um just the you know change of direction and stuff like that so it, is yeah. a bit questionable right now but um you know I, I I did everything I could to get back and and things like that was I probably a hundred percent probably probably not but you know it's um I you know I would I change anything absolutely not you want to go back and play on the biggest stage and oh. that's all there is to it so you do anything to give yourself every chance to to play and yeah. that's what I did. I've just got a random one that came in my head. Uh, what Gatorade were you drinking? Because we were all thinking about the novelties, right? And I'm going- Do you want to know I, how many people messaged me did asking they? what Gatorade we'd be having? <laughs> of all things, the Gatorade. Oh I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I could get in so much trouble <laughs> yeah, here if I do spill the beans here. I know, I know. But, uh, what, what Gatorade it was yellow. Got, it was yellow. The yeah, one it was drinking. yellow, the Gatorade. So, That's so I think funny. we'd had it all year. So yeah, a little bit of superstition comes into it a bit, I reckon, okay. too. So I don't think they wanted to change it very much. Um so yeah, we we stuck with the yellow. That's funny. Yeah. So maybe next year, anyone listening, look at the teams that are in there. Yeah. Have a look at who's playing and what they have. I think purple. So purple was nine dollars on Dabble. Um, red was eight, <laughs> and I think the yellow and that were the favourites. I, I don't, can't believe it's a thing. That just makes. I me, only know this because I looked right into it. That's I don't. Hilarious. I didn't. Um, I think I had five bucks on red. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought I looked through the history, and I don't think reds happened. Yeah, much. I got to double figures about people who asked me to get it. Really? I, yeah. No, nah, I couldn't. I can't I couldn't, believe you had double figures. You're in a Super Bowl. Yeah. You're coming off an injury, yeah, and they're and asking you what color the Gatorade. Unbelievable. <laughs> Believable, isn't it? I was like, damn, this world has changed a little oh. bit. <laughs> the novelty <laughs> markets. Oh my goodness. So good. Um, Super Bowl, like uh the, the, just the week. Yeah. I, I was actually in Scottsdale um a week like two weeks prior to Super Bowl. Mm. Went and watched some Phoenix Suns, yeah. Jock Landau looked after us, and I come home. That was the end of my trip pretty much. And I saw the city just lighting up. You know, they were putting signs up everywhere. Yeah. We actually drove past the arena. This is two weeks out. And it was, yeah. I can only imagine what it looked like when you were there. Yeah. Amazing. How do you describe it being, yeah. you know, with the crew? Hard to, to hard to describe, honestly. And the, the occasion's obviously just unbelievable. And they had the waste management there for those, oh. all those golf fans too. So they did that on purpose. And, um, yeah, I mean, Scottsdale and, you know, Phoenix was just absolutely electric. It was just, I can't put it into words exactly how it was, but it was just, yeah. I mean, we we got there on the Sunday before, so we spent the whole week there in the lead up and place was just buzzing, absolutely buzzing. So from the moment we got there throughout the whole week, you just continue to build up and you just notice more and more people, you know, as each day comes by and, yeah, you just knew that you're in for a bit of wild ride for sure. It's funny you mentioned the waste management. I can see the Clutch oh, yeah. & Co hat yeah, on, yeah. Dommy the Tyson. Boys, the boys looked after me. They've looked after you. <laughs> they're nothing but their performance power brand, the best in the business, That's Clutch & Co. That's great. Good um, stuff. Can you believe Dommy and I planned a trip to do that and he pulled out? He goes, he I really? can't. Yeah, and, and a huge shout out to the great man. He just got engaged. Yes, um, I heard about that. Yeah, so I, heard, I think I uh, yeah. Yeah, he has had a lot on his plate, but yeah. we had a strong plan and it would have worked beautifully. It was take the Clutch & Co cake Apps, get to waste management, yeah, and then that's his thing. that's his thing, yeah. and I love it as well because yeah. I just would have drank beers and had a good time. Hundred percent. And then it was all about the Super Bowl for me, and yeah. I go, let's just roll it in. And he and he, he pulled the plug. He goes, I don't know, mate, and we're gonna get grants and everything. I said, mate, <laughs> let's just don't worry about the grants. Let's get into it, you tight ass. <laughs> anyway, so big shout out to Clutch and oh, Go. He's he's working hard. He's I think grinding. He's, he's I grinding. know he's grinding. You know, I give him a little bit of follow and always try and keep up to date with what he's doing. He's doing well. He's so doing very well. He's good. Doing him, that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. and um, I just wanted to mention that while I, had to. I thought I might chuck it on. You know, got a it looks great. Got a you? round next week too, so you know I'll, I'll chuck it on there too. And oh, boys mate. are feeling good. Waste management, geez, that's yeah. A, I wish to... I went. My my uh my wife's family went. My brother came over as well, and they went on the Saturday, and they were just like. How good is this? Oh, it's golf. And I'm watching Max Max Homer just smacking balls out of the, you know, out of the rough there. And like the camera's like literally about 15 minutes away and they're having the time of their lives. Oh. They had the bet they had the best five days of their life. Oh, they would have. Oh, they unreal. Just yep. nonstop for them. And yeah, what an occasion. Oh mate, what an occasion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've 
You've allowed that. You've allowed I that. I've allowed it's, that. It's, a bit. All you, it's, helped, it's helped with the Eagles in general doing their thing, but yeah. not to have a little bit of a partner. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so waste management time. But yeah, Super Bowl. Rihanna's playing. Uh, were there any, were there any, like, because I know Benny Graham, I think Bruce Springsteen was the one when he was playing and yeah. he said he ducked out. Now, I know. I think I've even heard Patrick Mahomes come out publicly and the coach for him yeah. said, if, if I catch any of you out there, you're not playing yeah, for the rest of the game. Half, yeah. So I'd imagine yeah. similar thing. Very similar. But uh, our specialists go out there a little bit earlier anyway. So, um, cause we obviously go out and like have a bit of a warm up, you know, while the field's open just before the second half starts and that. So we actually had to roll out there like 10 minutes before the actual game started. So Rihanna was actually still playing. Oh, so that was good. I got like diamond at the end and oh, yeah, it was, nice. yeah. So I got it. I got a good six minutes of it, which was unreal. Oh, Just she crazy. Was, she's and special. she was phenomenal. And I know that, I know it's definitely set up for the, for the TV, like for sure, in terms of how they do it all logistic yeah. wise and that. But yeah, she was, she was rocking the place. Oh, they were, man. she was good. Oh yeah. And they had all the, everyone's phones out. Yeah, so for TV. Fans, was, fan, phones were out doing their thing. There's, and, a, um, yeah. there's a clip of one of the backup dancers nearly oh, fell off one of those. Oh, those yeah. oh my Lord. Imagine that. And there was no cables nah. or nothing. Like, or she, he or she almost and, went down. And you know what I was Bad. thinking was like, it's it's so courageous what they're doing. Yeah. Have you ever been at MSAC and climbed up the, like, the 10 yeah, meter? No, no. And, I, I mean, I have, but it's terrifying. Oh, imagine doing that in a stadium. Yeah. A little bit of stadium, two little wires holding this huge thing like platform for you and you have nothing holding you there. And you're dancing. And you're 50 metres up in the air. Oh. Good luck. Yeah, it was – it was, And it, those things were rocking too because mm. they obviously have to um, like do the moves properly and get the choreography right and um, – they're rocking. Yeah. You see them moving side to side because of how much movement they've got. Well, when he fell over, it started rocking. Yeah. Oh, it's scary. Unbelievable. But, um, oh, mate, again, there's another reason why this Super Bowl is <laughs> such a good – and then the game, like – to be honest, everyone didn't know who was going to win because yeah. exactly what happened. It was a, it's a, it's, it was just who could have the, you know, who would be up by the end of the game. Yeah. If you had another quarter, who knows, or another yeah. play. Um, but the game, how would you break it down? I mean, you guys pretty much uh, did dominate the first I, I half. I think in the end, I think just in the end, like they just were a lot cleaner in the end. Like even though we were up 24 14 at half time and we had so much possession of the football and, and things like that, like they, they probably just played slightly cleaner. Like we obviously had the fumble that they returned back for for a touchdown, and then um, you know obviously the big play on the punt to you know get the some serious return yards back, and there was a couple of other plays that we just like we were just short from you know like Devontae's catch kind of gets taken back, and you think that you've caught it. And then they were just like, oh yeah, that was a massive, yeah, play. you know, that was like forty yard, that was a forty yard play, and we're like in the red zone and stuff like that. And there's just little, little bits that like in the game where you're not really sure, and then obviously the holding at the end, and you're just like, oh, you know, it's just, Jesus. just yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna ask just you little, about that. little, yeah. little things, just little things. And they played clean, no turnovers, no sacks. Um, they just played their style of football. Um, we played ours for most of the part. Like we love holding on to the football and running down the clock and playing that game, and we did. Like we had it was twenty two. I think, on we, had, first I think half. we had. I think we had forty minutes of possession. It might have been forty minutes to twenty, you. something like that. It was ridiculous, but they just played cleaner and obviously scoring six points off a off a defensive play like helps you a lot too. And. That's yeah. kind of how the game went. But what, like, unbelievable game. Like, you're scoring 38, 30 to 35, and that's going to go down for as one of the best, you know, for sure. Oh, mate, it was unbelievable so, viewing. 35 minutes and 45, 47 seconds. Yeah. You guys had it for, they had yeah. it for 24. There you go. But I think they had it for only seven in the first they half. Did. They did. Um, that was 72 plays to 53. Yeah. We just had the ball forever, you know, absolute, like, so long. And then, obviously, the second half, they started to figure it out and – Come up with some plays. Probably ran the ball a little bit better too. They did in run the it, second half, but they couldn't. Then, they can't. But you know, your defense does yeah. not. 182 passing yards from Mahomes is yeah. probably one of the greatest we'll see yeah. in our era. We've got yeah. Tom Brady just finished up. 182. Like yeah. your defense, I think it only allowed like 250 yards yeah. in two games before that. So like they weren't giving up anything in yeah. the air, and I yeah. imagine that's going to happen next year. Yeah. It must be frightening coming up against your team. 
Yeah, I, I would think so. I think we get to keep most of our guys on defense too, which is great. So we, we get really get to keep the core guys and there's been some younger guys that we drafted last year that are going to come through and, and play some significant minutes, which is awesome. So uh, I'd like to think that we're going to be right up there again next year. I think you will be. It's <laughs> going to be it's going to be so much fun. I want to talk about, um, before I ask you a few about your teammates and um, your Aussie teammate as well, uh, the game's done. You have unfortunately lost. What happens in the NFL? I know, you know, I, I, I've been in the locker room in AFL when we, I was emergency, but I was always with the boys and it's, it's like a funeral and it's the worst place to be. Mm-hmm. You've come up short. Um, but obviously AFL culture and NFL, very different, very different businesses. You know, it's kind of like get on the piss and let's mm-hmm. just get blind for two, three days yep. and then we and then yep. start, it starts kicking in. But, mm-hmm. um, NFL is a, you know, there's a lot of personalities, a lot of people. What happens when the game finishes? Like, what did you, what happened? Talk me through it. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah it was definitely a funeral. Um, straight after the game. Yeah. Boys are pretty flat, pretty emotional. Um, you know, you got some older guys in there that don't know if they're going to be playing again, and um, guys thinking about what if, you know, and all that stuff. And it's it, it's it's hard. It's very very hard. I've never, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that, at least from my sporting side of things. That's for sure. And um, yeah, tough one to take. But uh, you know, boys come together. Uh, you know, they got an after party afterwards. You know, no matter what, whether you win or lose, there's an after party going on. So the boys kind of drown their sorrows a little bit for one night at least. But um, after that, it's it's kind of hop on a plane because we obviously all hop on a plane and go back to Philly and everyone goes their separate ways. It's, yeah. It just happens like that, you know. There's no real, as you said, like two or three days, a bit of a mad Monday, obviously, and then the boys stay, stick together and, um, you know, whether you've finished after round 23 or whether you've, you know, won or, or lost a grand final, you know, you get the two or three days together just to kind of reflect, have a laugh, always make idiots of themselves yeah. if they want to, but uh, none of that. Just yeah. all the family around after the night, so you kind of spend it with the family and then, you know, boys kind of kick on themselves once the family's got a bit tired and stuff. And it was it was still fun. I had a great time, like, with the guys that were there and you still reflect on a, what a good year it was, but just all happened so fast. Yeah, It's just imagine. in and out, in yeah. and out the door and um, – that's I got back here so quick. Like I, we flew back to Philly on on the Monday. Um, we had all our exit meetings and team meeting on a Tuesday just to kind of finish. So you went to the club, yep. yeah. And then I and then I flew back on Wednesday. Oh, so it's just in and out. I was in Philly for forty eight hours and just done. And yeah. everybody would have done the same thing, all gone. So it's just. It's how it goes. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, I don't. It's, I don't know how else to like to say it. Nah, it's just, well, that's just, just that's the, kind of what I expected. It is. It's business like. All year round. That's just how it is. So it's, um, yeah, it's weird. It is weird. It, it is. I'm not used to it. No, it'd not be weird all. for uh, Aussies not at all. compared yeah. to, you know, you've had the AFL career 100%. and then the NFL career. It's, yep. And that's a topic I've got later. Yeah. I've got the NFL, AFL topic. We're going to break down what they both do so well and what they lack. <laughs> Coach Siriani, he's a dog, as yeah. they say. He's yeah. great to watch. His energy. I love, I mean, I don't know, nothing against old people mm. and I don't want to disrespect the uh the fossils. Yeah. I love the younger coaches. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but they're very relatable. I feel like they motivate the players and they get the players more. Way better. And uh yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Andy Reid is the opposite. So there's not saying you, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. Um, but Siriani looks like a lot of fun and, yeah. a, and a guy that you want coaching. For sure. He's uh he's one of a kind. He is one of a kind. He's high energy. Um uh, relates to his players very, very well. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got plenty of time for head coach, and he's been awesome, um, giving me a chance to start off with. I mean, I was a guy that hadn't played a game in his first year of coaching, and so giving me the opportunity was awesome. But um, being able to being able to see him just do his thing and and grow as a coach, and as you said, a lot of those younger guys is coming in and kind of doing that now. I don't think I still don't think some of those younger guys. Um, produce that kind of energy is what he does. Um, so, you know, some people might give him a hard time about it, but us as a group freaking love it. He is, he's awesome. He's got some weird stories to like find a way to get his point across, but it works at the same time. And uh, yeah, he's just one unique character that you, you want to have. Yeah, for sure. Which That's is great. awesome. Any, yeah. um, any insights to some funny things? He loves can- Kobe Bryant a lot. So he always brings up Kobe Bryant stories and, the consistent one on like a serious note is um, 
him always talking about how Kobe was showing up at 3.30 in the morning and it's all about the detail, all about the detail. So he shows up at 3.30 in the morning and does his workout and that's Kobe talking about like, if I wake up at 3.30 and I work out at 4 and then I have a break and then I work out at 8 and if I had another break and then I work out at 12 and then I have one more break and I work out at 6, that's four sessions. The normal person gets up at eight and only has two. <laughs> so I'm doubling my work. And it's a weird long ass thing that just continues to go on, but you get the point. But he's shown it eight times already. Wow. In the one season. So the boys are watching the same clip every two weeks type thing to get the point across like, coach, we get it, man. <laughs> we get it. We know what you're talking about. But it's not, it's no different clips. It's the same one that he keeps bringing up. Yeah. He's like, it's all about the detail, boys. Yeah. It's all about the details. I'm like, all right, that's a good one. And then another one on a lighter note is about this. We have this thing called like dog mentality, right? Yeah, so dog. we're all about like we're the dogs, man. We're a bunch of dogs. And it's all he ever shows is a video of greyhounds chasing rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> and like- The meadows, down at the meadows. They don't give a shit about who catches how many rabbits just as long as they fucking get that rabbit. <laughs> And I was like, all right, I get your point. Great. And the same thing. He shows it another six times throughout the year. Oh, just what like, a, what a man. Just remember the rabbit and the dog. <laughs> dog mentality, boys. All right, break up. I'm <laughs> like, shit. Oh, He's unique. You know, everyone, yeah. everyone's got a unique little character to him. I, I feel like just every head coach does. Yeah. His one's like, his one's like, a, I find it a good way though. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It is a lot of fun. The boys kind of take the piss out of it a little bit, but who doesn't take the piss out of their home tech that. coach a little bit? Yeah. You know, that's what brings locker rooms together a little bit more. But uh, no, nah, in, all, in all seriousness, he's uh, he, he is awesome and he'll definitely be around for a long time for sure. He's uh, He can relate to the Philly fans, I think, too, in terms of just his passion and like drive and um, definitely the Philly fans absorb that too. I was going to say, the Philly fans, I haven't been to Philly. I've been to a few places. I haven't been to Philly. Yeah. I've watched a lot of videos of Philly fans. <laughs> um, all positive remarks. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it was. Um, <laughs> some of the things I saw is like, mate, it's, oh, it's the most, pa it's, yeah, it's a most passionate place. If, if that's the way you want to put it. Like, yeah. passions may be one word. Idiotic may be another one. But, uh, they're greasing up light poles and that, so they yeah, can't climb they've got them. to do what they've got to do. They're, they're sports fanatics to the – to the max. Like, I just, I don't know. I feel like they're Pies fans on steroids, to yeah. be honest. Like, they're just <laughs> wild, absolutely wild. But, um, I reckon the Pies fans are tame compared to Yeah. The well, no, that's what I'm saying. Definitely. But, um, no, nah, they're, they're, they're great. I mean, they're, they're passionate about their sport. Like, all four teams that they've got there, like, they're, they just absolutely live and breathe it. And, um, the Eagles are probably the biggest out of all of it, like, for sure. And, um, I don't really, I don't really think they give a shit who they offend. It's just like yeah. it is what it is. You know, when you got ten year old boys spitting on it and putting on the rude finger to the opposition, you know you're in for a, a rough day. So I'd rather be on their side than not on their side. Well, uh, that's uh, true. Like yeah. ten year old, you see the videos of just like them flipping the bird and spitting on these people, and it's <laughs> unbelievable. Like there's a video out of uh, Joey, like Joey Bosa going to a Philly game. Because Nick was playing, um, obviously for San Fran, and these three Philly fans are just abusing the shit out of Joey Bosa. You got to check it out one time. It is oh, hilarious. Wow. Like, just how's it feel to be on the sideline, Joey Bosa? And Bosa's like going back at him the whole time, and it was hilarious. Like a thirty-five second video. It's oh just outstanding. Yeah, I have to see you got to check it well, out. We had it's to unreal. Just, no fun, literally, mate. just type in just Joey Bosa like uh, Philadelphia. And I'm a hundred percent sure that'll pop up, and it's just great. Oh, that's so great. good! How loud? Like how loud? Loud is the home game. Oh, loud! Especially those, especially those playoff games. They were, they were like louder than the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl's a bit uh, more corporate, or no? Nah? Uh, I, I would probably say so. Yeah. So it's for like sure, a it's like a prelim for sure, AFL. Yeah. for sure. And um, I mean, the thing is, is obviously like. It's literally at our stadium. So, you know, it's that's like – it's probably playing over in West Coast or something, having all those fans like there, you know, every time, you know, something's good happening, like it gets pretty loud. But, yeah. Um, 
yeah, those Philly fans are set of something else. And in those playoff games, they were they were huge for us. Yes. They were huge. So it's such an advantage. Come in isn't numbers. It? Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's that's what makes it so unique, isn't it? Like obviously here in Melbourne, um, obviously 10 teams being here just makes it not as like not as crazy and Hostile. stuff like that. Obviously, more, you know, there's more members for certain teams. I could get that, but having a whole city behind you. And knowing that you're coming into a hostile environment, that's that's intimidating for sure. Yeah. yeah. Especially when 10-year-olds are 100%. spitting on your head yep. and flipping you off. That's true. Yeah. And telling you things and actually getting yeah, you. Exactly. <laughs> and your parents are right. They're okay with it too. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes it even They're crazier. egging them on. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, good boy. I'll get you a pie for that. <laughs> <laughs> Another hot dog. <laughs> Fuck, that is brilliant. Oh, that's great. I, I want to see this video clip. I'm normally all over these clips. The, um, yeah, entertaining. The, the Philly uh, fan base, celebrities, uh, there's a few. Bradley Cooper's one that yeah. rings him, uh, rings uh, you know, a bell. And yeah. Kevin Hart's the other. Yeah. There's there's a few more as well. Yeah. Um, have you met them, boys? I haven't. No, I haven't yet. I've seen Kevin Hart on the sidelines a fair bit, which is good, but hard to find because he is yeah. He is tiny. Yeah, yeah must have that crowd. So I love you, Kevin, though. You're you're legit. You're 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 awesome and very funny. So don't hurt my don't hurt me when I come back. But um no, nah, that's it's it's good. A few of them get on the sideline and do their thing. And Mike Trout, who the big LA Angels guy, he's a huge fan, grew up in Philly, so he gets back as often as he can as well. And um yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's uh it's good to have him there. They don't always come up and stuff like that, but for the bigger games you'll yeah, you'll see him there and they're up in their box and join their time. And, yeah. and doing their thing but um yeah it's uh sometimes that's you know that's part of it and uh i still have to pinch myself like realize that people like that are watching your games and stuff like that not obviously to watch me who gives a shit about me but <laughs> you know for the most part it's it's pretty cool it's, uh, it's mate, what you're doing it's 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 crazy like, i know you've done a lot of podcasts and i could sit here we could do we could do 10 of these because i know i think you've you've um you did a great one with dill and i know you touched on um you know, college and getting into the system. Today, I'm really just keen to talk about this season. We could do another thousand um, because what you've done is, mate, well done. Congratulate. But what you've done is you, you're inspiring so many others in Australia that uh, have played AFL and maybe failed. You know, maybe they've 22 years old and they've gone to Williamstown and, and they thought, what's next? What else can I do? Or can I go study? And also, can I potentially forge out a career you can you know and um mate well done it's it's inspiring it's great to see we want more aussies in nfl for sure um we know you know there's a bit of a cult down here and that's kind yeah. of what we're doing here at american aces it's you know that the pack's getting bigger and bigger but for sure. the passion for the sport is so high yep. um and seeing you and jordan represent the country was pretty cool yeah. uh and, and you know you're in a team as i said you're gonna you got a list that's gonna be there for the next you know however long i think for the next few years exactly right yeah. you've got a solid list um yeah. and that's what i want to talk about now i want to talk about some of the players Let's start with your quarterback mm. i I was, as you know, I, I love it and I watch a lot. He just says, he's so wise mm. and he says so much, he's just so much greatness comes out of his mm. mouth, regardless of the result. Yeah. Like you're talking about the hardest thing, you know, the probably the toughest day of his professional career, which is yeah. Super Bowl. Mm. And what he says was just so good post-match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's he like in the locker room? He must be so good to have around. Yeah, he's... uh He's he's unique and in a in in the best way possible. I mean, he's uh as he likes to say, he's a different breed. And um he yeah, I mean, it's honestly it's honestly hard to describe because of how much he puts into trying to be the best. And um he's never satisfied with what he's done. Um he had to fight through a lot of adversity to get to where he is today, and people still knock him. Mm. And for him to continue to have that drive and to prove people wrong is, it's inspiring. It on, it honestly is. And um, you know, I'd love to be able to take a leaf out of his his book, honestly, and not worry about outside noise and that all the time. Because especially again in Philadelphia, that's what happens. But he's in a position where the whole NFL and almost the whole of America is watching him, hoping that uh, they prove him right and saying. He wasn't ready for it. And the way he is, the way that he's got himself to in the position that he is right now is just incredible. And he will, he'll get paid a pretty penny in the not too distant future, I'm sure. Um, but he will remain the same person 
no doubt, and he will want to win that championship so badly that um, he'll come back bigger and better next year. And it's just – it's awesome to watch. Like, the to see the growth from him being a starting quarterback when I, when I first got there because that was his first year starting to now um, – Unbelievable. So you used to come yeah. through the ranks at the same time. Yeah, he, we were the same draft year in the end. And then I I actually was on the practice squad for Detroit for a year and then he got drafted to Philly. And then he was like behind Carson for the year and then played towards the end of the year. And then I moved over to Philadelphia and that was Jalen's first year as a, as a starting quarterback. Starting so, quarter, yeah. Um, you know, two years as starting quarterback and being able to get to a Super Bowl and and dominate it like he did. Oh, and, it's fu- you know, we, we, we were actually know, thinking three or four four touchdowns, maybe three rushing, three rushing, and maybe two AJ Brown deep. Yeah, yeah, and maybe one other one. Someone else ran in. There's got to be. I think one it was more. Boston Scott that ran one in for a touchdown. Yeah, there's so be one three more. himself and then a passing one, and uh, threw for three hundred yards or something like that too. Like just. Man, he went um, for um, 304 um, in yeah. the air, 69 yards rushing yeah. from 15 attempts yep. and three touchdowns. The yep. longest was 28. Yep. And he threw uh, a touchdown to AJ Brown. Brown. The deep one. That's right. And like just just dominated. And the kid's 24. That's that's the crazy part about it. Philly's going to have a bright future. Oh, I'm he, so, I, I mean, 24. You got a good quarterback. You're going to, yeah. and it, but you got a quarterback like you said that's yeah. a really good person. 100%. I just can't imagine how excited 100%. they'd be. Yeah. So when does he get paid? Is it the following He's year? He's eligible now. Oh, so they're going to start so, talking about yeah, it now. Yeah, I would. I would say they'll probably start talking about it now and seeing what happens. I, again, I'm not my expertise, but yeah, um, he deserves it. He hasn't proven anything else. I mean, arguably. MVP should have been MVP of the year and um, no, nothing takes nothing away from Patrick. Patrick had an unbelievable year and deserves it just as much, but Jalen was pretty good. Yeah, he was. He's, um, he's a beast on the goal line. Yeah. Uh, so the, the reason, so everyone talks about him in the gym and this is actually, yeah. I'm looking forward to asking this question. They reckon, you know, they reckon they're going to get rid of this QB sneak that you guys are doing. I don't know what the play is called because you're too good at it. That's the talk. I don't know if it's going to happen oh, or heard, not. I've heard about it too. Yeah. Um, because if you guys are forcing- Why don't people just try and stop it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they just, I think they can't. <laughs> I think the NFL is saying we need to- Figure miss- out the way for defense to stop it rather than change the rule. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> it's like, it's first and uh, 10. They need to make it first yeah, and 12 because right. Philly's got yeah. this amazing play on Seriously. third and fourth downs. Yeah, incredible. Um, yeah, it is incredible how the NFL just wants to stop just, that. Yeah, it's just they try and find a way. I don't think you can stop it though. Like mean, that's probably their problem. Yeah. Um, but a play that you guys have, you know, you, you know, you, you've <laughs> created it we are. and, um, and mastered it. I feel like at the same oh, time and, yeah, mastered sure. it. Yeah. and nothing, no disrespect to Gardner Minshew. Cause I, I actually love the way he goes about it. Yeah. But when he was playing, they did the same play and the legs not just same. collapsed. It's not, not the same. same. He must've be squatting like the big yeah, no, He's not squatting like Jalen. I'll tell you that. So much. what is so Jalen squatting? Lives, oh, probably like 600 pounds. So it's like. What's that in kilos? Oh, it's like probably above 400. How the f- how? Yeah, just a beast. I've seen a clip on when yeah. he was at um, college and they all get around yeah, him. just a beast. It's a box squat, yeah? Yeah. So he's- Actually, I think it's a normal squat. No box. No box. 600 pounds. Yeah. Quarterback. Yeah, he's he's just a beast. How big is he? Like, you're, you're, yeah, how like tall are you, 6'5"? I'm five? taller than him. I'm taller, taller than him. I'm 6'2". Six, 6'2". I'm six two, six two. And he's only just like shorter than me, but just built wow. like a brick shit house. Mate, yeah. what, what's your what's your max back, nah, I'm not, I'm not, back squat? I don't squat anymore, mate. Yeah. <laughs> don't do any of that stuff. And it's certainly not 600 pounds, I'll tell you that. Not with my little chicken legs, oh, that's for sure. Oh, don't you talk about chicken legs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> if you're calling yours chickens, I mean, they're probably three times the size of mine. Yeah, no, nah, I'm probably 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 just long gone with the squat stuff, my friend, that's for sure. Oh, we're gonna talk, <laughs> oh mate, I can imagine. Uh, is it? So we're gonna, you do, you, I mean, I'm going to keep talking about your teammates. We'll get into yeah. you in a second. We're going to talk heavily about you. But there's a few other plays I love, right? Yeah. So I'm an offensive man. Yeah. Um, Who isn't? I mean, I just, yeah. And you play fantasy. That's yeah. what I love. First question I asked before yeah. we got on. Are you playing fantasy? Have you to, love it. Have to. Got all, my, all, all the Aussie buddies here that are a few that I play at Williamstown with. They love it. So it's good. Oh, it's, it's good the fun. best. And I, and I reckon a lot of people listen to this because, you know, you as, as I said, you're the first, I think you're the first current NFL player oh, I've had because all the players I've had have uh, ex, you know, retired. I'll take that one. So there you go. You're the first. <laughs> so a lot of NFL fans will be tuning in. Um, I love that you played. Did you win your fantasy this year? Uh, I did not. No. I. Jeez, what did I do? Who was your quarterback? Wilson. Oh. Yeah. 
Of to be honest, you weren't the only bloke that thought he was going to have a good really? year. And I don't want you to say anything negative. I'll say really, it for you. He I was, really thought he was in he for was a big one. Really, I really trash. Did. Yeah, I really thought he was in for a big one and not so much. So uh, not good. Not good. On that, so I'm hearing – so do you find this bizarre? This is what I'm hearing. Had his own – wanted his own office or had his own office upstairs – um, he had his own crew. Had his own crew inside the facility. Yeah. So his own probably massage therapist, physiotherapist. Yeah. I'm only imagining this is what he had. Uh, if you put that into the Philly yeah. locker room, that no. would just be bizarre. Not working. It? Nah. Not working. So it's an easy fix. And, and, and head coach, new head coach there, Sean Payne, Payne's already come out and yeah, just yeah. said, like, that's not happening. And that that's just bizarre. I've never, I've actually never heard of that anywhere, anywhere in the NFL. Like, yeah. I've, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. I, I don't know what else to say. Nah, it's nah. Well, uh, you know, I just real bizarre. But it didn't work for him. Well, the lo- that's all I can say. You lose the locker room. You're not. You're not for gonna- sure. They were a shit show this year. Oh yeah. The Broncos were a shit show. So hopefully, with Sean Payton being back or something like that, they might get themselves together. I've got no idea. But um, yeah. Tough year. Tough year. But I think they've got a good list. I think with Payton there and they were they do they got they they've always been solid on defense, um, and that's. That's what's going to put you in good stead to be able to hopefully win a championship. I think they just got to get their offense going. Mm. Stars on the offensive side. It's going to be funny because the head coach is now the offensive coordinator yeah. of the Jets. So yeah. it, it, it's it's all eyes on Jets offense sure. and Russell. And For it's sure. like, okay, who actually who is actually it? Because we're mess. now hearing yeah. all these reports out of Seattle that so Russell true. was trying to get rid of the coach and the GM so and he's shut it down on Twitter. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. And and, and, no he, and he did ball the last two weeks. So everyone's like, well, who was it? Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, if Aaron Rodgers goes to the all Jets. I know, all I know is that I'm not going to be picking him this time around. So No. <laughs> no. I think you should get your guy. Hurts. If he's around, he might, might be just early. just pick him first. Just, yeah. just get it done. Yeah. Honestly. No, nah, I think you should. No, it's not normally how it works, but I might just do it just because he oh. scores points galore. So it's well, great. he'll go early this year. Yeah, and if will. you're in a keeper league, you're laughing. Yeah. A couple more players before I talk about you and your prep and some of the things you've done. Um, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, got it. Um, you know, you got your running back room. Jason Kelsey is a fan favorite of yeah. mine. I love him. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll keep Jordan Mail at the end because yeah. Aussie v Aussie. But those boys I mentioned, weapons. Yeah. And Big dogs, like when they walk around and yeah. obviously Hurts is the quarterback. What's it like hanging out with these guys? And do you see some some crazy stuff from fans? Yeah, it's um yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. Like you you say those names and stuff like that, and it's a, it's a pretty cool situation to be in, isn't it? Like it's um hard to, you know, fathom that you're actually in that kind of situation. But uh <laughs> in all in all honesty, and I've said this to a few people, like our locker room was so close that they they do feel like they're just kind of normal normal guys. And I definitely know that we don't get you don't get that everywhere in the NFL. But um it's probably the closest thing that I've had to uh like a, an AFL locker room style if that makes sense. Yeah. Just particularly through the year. And that's how kind of close we were. So like having AJ, like it's obviously a huge thing, like having AJ Brown like talking to you and Devontae Smith like talk to you, but I just see him as normal people because that's like yeah how our group is in general. Um which is pretty cool because you're not going to have that everywhere. Like I was at Detroit um I was at Detroit in my first year and we had um you know, Matthew Stafford and uh, Danny Amendola and like Marvin Jones who's at the at the Jaguars now and stuff like that. And they just like wouldn't – you wouldn't really get a lot from them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you knew that they were the big dogs, if that makes sense. Whereas I don't feel that way in Philly, maybe because it's a younger group in general too. But um, even the older guys like Lane Johnson, oh, uh, you know, Jay, as, as you said, Jason Kelsey um, on the defensive side, you know, Brandon Graham and and uh, Fletcher Cox and that. Like, it's just, it's so cool. Like, you can literally, you just sit down with them and yeah. just have a conversation with them like they're just normal people. And that was that was awesome. I think that's the best part about our group is that everybody gets along with everybody. Um, Nobody has their own like group that they kind of stick with the whole time and things like that. And it was a pretty unique situation. That is cool. And that's probably why we, uh, you know, half of the reason why we made it as far as what we did, because we were actually a pretty tight group. And you could probably see the same thing with the Chiefs and that as well. Like you could just see that they're a, a tight group and often they're the ones that are going to have more success for sure. It is a, such a, um, like it's, it's the key to success. Mm. I've been so big on locker room. Mm. Um, and enjoying each other's yeah. company. AFL is very different. We've got 
uh, 40 odd on a list. Everyone, you know, we talk about an 18 man mm-hmm. press. Everyone plays defense. Yep. We've got seconds. We all do team meetings together, but everyone kind of needs each other on the field where with the NFL offense, defense, and special teams, um, I guess in the past it was like the, which is the opposite of what you just said. It was like offense, like QB room, stick together, yeah. RB room, yep. wide receiver room, yep. same sure. thing. Everyone sticks. But no, you're yeah. saying that even as a as a punter, which they used to, they and again, I want to ask you, do they look? They used to look down on punters. Yeah. That's obviously not the case. Not where I, not, not how where I'm from anyway. Like yep. they seem to be a little bit more valuable now, just for one in general. But two, um, yeah, like. Just as That's I said, awesome. just the locker room is just great, and who knows whether the Australian thing it may become as a bit of a novelty. Yeah. I've got no idea, but I'll take it. So it's, the, it's, fine, it's fine with me. What do they call you? Um, no, they still call they still call me Sip and and stuff like that. But they always try and do the Australian accent. It's just a disaster. It's a like, disaster. Just, like you putting on an English accent. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Who's the worst? Like, who's always oh, that? There's yeah. a couple of, there's a couple of DBs, like corn, the cornerbacks and stuff. Not, not Slay, like the, like Darius Slayer or the bigger guys, but there's a couple other guys. We've got a, um, one guy we get along with really well. His name's Marcus Epps and he's like been our starting safety for the year and really good player, but he always tries to do it. And he just, he always just comes out of nowhere and goes, oi, <laughs> fuck off. And I'm just like, <laughs> That's the only thing that he does really, really well. Because if he tries to speak to me normally, it's it's a disaster. He just can't do it. It's just horrible. <laughs> and there's other guys that try and do it in the in the building, and you're just like, mate, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's just no good. Yeah. It's just no good. The shrimp but on the, the novel, barbie. The novel, oh, it's the, the worst. The, I don't know, whoever come up with that? Yeah, because I got a bit of that when I was in Newport. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll put a shrimp on the bar. I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. that? Yeah, and it's like you do realize that we actually don't do that. He goes. <laughs> I don't care. Like it's funny. It's a uh, my like, right. <laughs> Who's an Australian icon in their eyes? Like obviously oh, we had. They love Steve, Steve Irwin. Irwin. They Still love Steve it. Irwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They love Steve Irwin. Oh, that yeah. That's that's all they do. It's Steve Irwin and nobody else. Fuck, who that's do you it. Who do we, I would have thought Fisher or someone would be close? Yeah, but, but he's not really speaking, is he? Nah. Not really. I wonder who the next Steve Irwin would yeah, be. Yeah, I don't know. It's a maybe. Big son's sh- going to have to just really up up his game and stuff. i got no idea, Steve but Irwin. they love, they love Steve. Yeah. Cause he was on their TV, like growing up, like you, I think he was more of a freaking, oh, well, it's hard to say. Cause he was obviously an icon here. Yeah. Type thing, but like he was big over there. Mm. So they just remember him. That's great. It's good that the they still, yeah. And the NFL locker room, so like even like a Ric Flair, for example, yeah. you see them impersonating Ric Flair and how, you know, he's, yeah. he's pretty old, the big fella now. Yeah. But yeah, it's great that Steve's still the man. Yeah. They love it. Just straight away bringing up. So that's pretty cool. That but, is cool. Uh, me being obviously the novelty probably helps with that too. And I feel like I'm a pretty chilled out kind of guy and that, like, no offense to most of the punters and, you know, special teams guys out there, but. We're, they are a bunch of weirdos. Like they're <laughs> unique, <laughs> yeah. a unique individual like group type thing. You know, a bunch of individuals in a group of situation. Not really for them, I don't reckon. Like I've yeah. met, a, I've met a few of them that are a bit out of left field. It so is maybe different. being like me, being a bit normal and just like having a chat and like having a laugh and stuff like makes it easier to be able to get around the locker room a bit better and just have yeah. a chat and being more of a lad. Like and actually sure. like, I know what I, sure. I used to be the star over here. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm just playing my role, but I used to kick him from 80 well, I boys. I wasn't a star here either, but Hey, <laughs> Do you it's, show uh, your highlights though? Like some of the goals you've kicked down here. Well, they, they, they want to have a look like to know what it is. So of course I yeah. show my stuff. Like there's no <laughs> yeah. point showing the normal stuff. I'll show what I've got. <laughs> They they go oh gee that that's pretty fucking sick and yeah. I'm just like yeah I mean I used to be alright at it so um no nah, it's pretty it's pretty funny they always want to have a look at it and which is good and like my kicker Jake Elliott like likes to be a bit of a smart ass sometimes and show it up and like our smaller meetings and oh, you know, get it up yeah a larrikin type thing but uh no nah, it's fun it's that's good brilliant. it's good I love that and do they get because are they going to come out so I think they're more and more coming out to Australia to yeah to see it I think. You know, we had um, even like NBA, like Jamal Murray come out. We yeah. had Dirk Nowinski come out. Like they're all loving it. Yeah. I it's just only... getting them on the plane to be actually able I to know. do it. Like they don't want to do because they get so nervous about how long the flight is. Is that what it is? Yeah, 100%. So they're just too scared. They don't, they don't want to sit on a plane for 15 In, hours. But they'd be flying first class. Yeah, no doubt. But it's just the thought of being on something yeah. for 15 hours, I guess. Like they just find it weird because like even if they go over to Europe or like things like that, it's like six or seven. Yeah. 
eight, it's like, oh yeah, okay, that's doable. But I can't believe that I, I come to Australia. Would, it's the yeah. best place in the world, that's easily. Unbelievable. And like my my kicker actually is like being with uh four or five other like kickers or punters like throughout his college career. So he knows like a few of the guys out here and uh he played with um actually uh Ben Jacobs' younger brother. Oh yeah. Like Nick Jacobs went over there and uh played at Memphis for him with him. So my my kicker knows him too. So it's like, mate, come on. Of all people, you should be able to come over here and yeah. like enjoy your time and stuff. But it just yeah, he goes, Oh, I'm not getting on a plane for four. What is it? Hours. LA like, was yeah. LA or oh, Philly is if that's a longer Obviously, flight. Yeah. What are you doing? Nineteen? Uh, yeah, total flying time probably to get here was 20, 20 yeah, yeah. 2021. It's like six hours from Philly to LA and then 15, obviously from, yep. from LA to home. But, uh, I mean, you just kind of, you just got to do it. it. They you, just the kinda, boys, the boys you just kind of do it. Don't yeah. You? The yeah. boys have like the way they would train and yeah. apply their body, you know, all the deep end, they you know they yeah. work so hard mentally. Yeah. Surely they can just get on a plane. Yeah. Drink their a mental couple of strength. Of wine if you want to and have a just, snooze you know, in have first, snooze, you'll be sweet. And then get rock star treatment yeah, exactly. down here because we don't get many of them. Exactly. I, think I love it. Big shark band down here. I mean, yeah, I, get, I've, I heard that was big. Big. I mean, I guess obviously the big fellas make a lot of cash. The yeah. boys are on a lot of cash. They should just embrace it. But uh, yeah, I always, I'll always, try and convince them as I keep going and see how I long think it takes. It'd be for great. Them to Let's get a tour. I think. I don't know. I'm hoping we actually play a game out here. Well, I spoke to Benny Graham about this and COVID set that back yeah. in his eyes. So I'm hoping we actually get a game out here in the not too distant imagine, future. Imagine Even if MCG. it's just a preseason game or something like that somewhere. Well, and the boys would be too scared. We'll work, we'll work our way around it, but who knows? Yeah, It'd be, be like, cool. uh, yeah, no, I won't say. I was going to say like an AFL uh, preseason game, <laughs> going to you know where, like, yeah. fuck, oh, you've got to be kidding. Grow the game there. Why are we going to go there? <laughs> you know when you get the old schedule? Oh, boys, we're going oh, down no. here to grow the game. Well, fuck it. Yeah, hell. I know. I'm <laughs> And I'm a fringe player. Oh, it's fringe. like the grand final. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So true. Um, your routine for a game, I'm really interested. Like, you've always had a massive leg. We know that there's an there's an art to it. Um, like, how much how much are you when you're punting the ball? Like, you know, we're talking about two things. You're pretty, you know, your routine and kicking. But like, how much are you putting into it to thump it, or are you you're just trying to time it and hit the sweet spot, or is it tactical placement? Yeah. It, Probably, probably all three things that you kind of said, to be honest. Um, depends where you are on the field, you know, start off with. Preparation-wise, I uh, um, I keep it, I keep it pretty low-key, um, you know, going into a game and stuff like that. It's just simply just you know, getting my get my body nice and limb and things like that and often just get into the spa quickly to warm up the body. and Pre-game? Yeah, pre-game and just nothing too crazy, just a quick little one just to kind of warm up the lower body and stuff and – have a shower and make sure I'm like, yeah, all right. Now it's now it's kind of go time of thing, and then um, have a bit of a stretch and that, like normal. And um, that's, I mean, that's basically it. Like, I don't really think like I have to go too crazy, and um, you know, I get the back cracked and that, and make sure I'm feeling good to go, and go out there and just um, obviously a few ball drops to just you know get the line of where I want the ball to be in, in my hands and um, making sure that it's in the right spot to be able to do that. So I focus on just going to catching and dropping the ball and, yeah, then I get in, get into a few swings and um, see what kind of the wind's doing. Philly's a pretty windy like windy place to kind of play in general and um, just kind of knowing what I need to do going into the game, you know, location-wise, where they want it to go and, um, yeah, just kind of those little small things to, to concentrate on. But, yeah. Um, you know, as you said, in terms of the, in terms of, you know, do I want to go out there and smack it like every time? You know, depends where you are. Like if you're a little bit further down the field, yeah, of course, you just want to let it rip and just try and get down there as, um, as much as you possibly can. Obviously, when we're getting closer to the fifty yard line and you know inside that fifty, you obviously want to be in a bit more precise and hang up the ball a little bit higher. Make sure they can't get any return yards or anything like that, and, and get a nice inside ten in that to have a you know give our defense events a good chance. So there's a little bit more tactics that go into it now it's not just about bombing away and just yeah. good luck to you and see where it goes um you know obviously location plays a huge part in it now because returners are they're so good so good like yeah. every single one of them is so good and um that's just what they do yeah you know, isn't it and, no they are um it's almost like second level it's just, it, it's just it's you just and him crazy. <laughs> it is and you have to obviously see where they're kind of do they're trying to read where you are and little things like that and um, you know, a little bit of cat and mouse is involved with it all, but yeah, just making sure that your location probably is, is the number one priority because you just, 
if you can eliminate a third of like two thirds of the field, then you've basically done half your half your job already. So, yeah. you know, getting it, you know, where as you as you can see on the field, you've got the numbers on both sides. If you get it there, or you know, outside of that, you've you've done your job with a decent amount of hang time and and decent amount of um, distance. And obviously, you rely on the other guys that are going down there to you know make a tackle for you. Yeah, if you're at the 50, 40, whatever it is, you, you got the goal line. Yep. How aggressive are you at trying to get it as close to the goal line? As, or, or, to. or you just think the 10's fine? Yeah, just, I think for the most part the 10's fine and the coaches are happy with that. Um, you, you want you want to yeah. get it like a and, and this, this, It's this, enticing. You know when like, you kick a drop part yeah. and you spin it backwards? Yeah. Like have you nailed that? Every kick I, will just I spin think, backwards? I think for the most part, like, yeah, I, I, I'm getting pretty good at it. Like actually getting that kind of high – like revolution thing and getting it to kind of check back a little bit, which is good. Um, some fields don't allow that for you. Like, you know, you're playing on artificial turf and it's like. Oh, it doesn't allow it on artificial. It's tough on the hard, like. It doesn't grip. Artificial, whereas the grass is good, like real good. That's so, a good little bit of knowledge that. You know, it's kind of got to be smart about it in a way. And then ultimately, you know, if you're doing it, you just want to hang the ball just nice and high and just make sure they literally get nothing. That's mm. honestly what you want. So, um, as I said, the tactics kind of all part of it in a way, which is cool. Um, but ultimately like, you know, you would love one just to bounce at the three and oh, then just yeah. like, you know, but you have to rely on the other guys down there to kind of make a play for you too. You know, yeah. that's the thing. Cause the return is now just like, if the ball's, they get told if the ball, you're going to stand at the eight yard line or the seven yard line. If you feel like the ball's going over your head, don't touch it. So it's like all well and good. I can be aggressive if I want to, but then I'm relying on obviously my two gunners to go down there and make sure they stop the ball from get a touchback or else, you know, and it's tough. if the gunner makes a mistake, do yeah. they get a bit of a slap in the team meetings? Oh, I'll let them know. Oh, you'll I'll let, them, let know them know personally. Because it'll ruin your kick. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let them know personally. I mean, I have to, I like, I, like I have to, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah. I'll put it in the right spot and I'll, and whether or not I'm like being a bit of a smart ass or whether yeah, I'm like yeah. serious, you know, give or take on how the situation is. Like it is a little frustrating. Like you get the ball in a good spot, you get it to check up and they're super aggressive, right? All they want to do is make the play. Like I get that, but some of them just like slide forward thinking that they have to dive to try and like get the ball back. And that's just like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I have noticed. Just, just hold it. Just hold the, it. When dog. the ball, uh, when when there's some fumbles, there's bodies flying, and they're flying like everywhere. I'm like, lads, just pick it up. Yeah, because <laughs> like, just, I just can only imagine just the helmet. Plant your feet on the ground and pick up the ball, type thing. But yeah. hey, it's easier said than done. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Can't do much about it in the no, end. So you can't. that's why you're often better just like kicking it straight to them and just like letting them catch it like seven or eight yard line. Because then you're like, all right. Plays over. Yeah. You're all good. Any um any pinch yourself moments? Obviously, this year's been pinch yourself every moment. Yeah. But I'm talking like other players. I've heard you talk about Tom Brady. Um, oh, yeah. you know Mahomes. You you've played him a few times now, and and your I mean your team's so stacked as well. But are there any other players that you love and you see? And I'm a huge fan of Travis Kelsey. I was gonna say Killer yeah. Trav. Yeah, I mean. We played Kansas City last year. Like it was my fourth game playing. We played them at home, and uh, yeah, that was. It was pretty crazy and seeing big Travis just running around and doing his thing. I remember Tyreek Hill had about 180 yards that day and three oh. touchdowns. Like that was just, mate, guys fly around. Like, He's so around. quick. Yeah. Like every week, every week for me could be a pinch myself moment in terms of who I'm playing against or who's going to be out on the field, whether it's offense or defense, just like stars everywhere like Derek Henry oh beast played him this year and we 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 kept him in check like our defense played unreal but he is a monster mm. like you you can get an idea about seeing him on TV but seeing him like live he is huge the and boys I'm just talk like, about it in the locker room like oh man yeah no <laughs> that like the D line's like talking about it all week like trying to figure out how they're going to do it and, and things like that it's like damn we got Derek this week like you know like it's quite funny but they played him really well in the end so yeah I mean every week there's a yeah there's definitely a pinch myself moment to be like man oh, it's so cool bro like that dude's like right in front of me now just about to go and do his thing like it's just it's so cool I mean, so Travis cool. Kelsey is the coolest dude in For the sure. NFL as well. And his brother is the complete like opposite. opposite, just like a family man, wears his Nike five five fifties or whatever they are, like the old man. Cargo like, shorts. Oh, sorry, not the Nike, the New Balance yeah. uh, 550 shoes that are old, like just old, 
like dad shoes and he loves it. Oh, like just loves it. I love their um, and he's awesome. I love their potty, the new yeah, heights oh, potty. Mate, yeah, the new heights is just blown up, blown up. But, it's so cool, and it's because of exactly that. And I mean, what a season to launch yeah, it as well. Seriously. The timing, timing of, it, of everything. Um, so raw. Talk about a script. You know? I know, I know. <laughs> the script. I mean, the, the Kelsey Bowl, yeah, like unreal. legit, unreal. Oh my god, yeah, that's um. Mate, again, well done on us. An amazing season that next year you'll go one bigger and uh yeah. I hope so. It'll be it'll be good. I've got um I've got some uh so we've talked about teammates. Now NFL AFL, pretty quick segment before we go to the QA here from the ACES community. Um what does the AFL need to do that the NFL does so well? Ah, uh, now I heard this come up a few weeks ago and I read it and I was in complete agreement. And I think that if they could find a way to do a like mid season trade stuff would be sick. That would be awesome. Like no like three week period trying to like get it done and like scramble, like have like front office, have people upstairs on the go like trying to figure out if they can make this team better now and like teams that are like know they're on the cusp and they need to make a big move and like yeah if you can make that work that'd be huge and now you need players buy-in like because players are obviously know right now in the AFL like this is where I'm going to be like I'm comfortable with that like would they would they be up for making a mid-season move over to West Coast I don't know like yeah probably not but if the AFL just goes, this is happening, it would maybe, be, like maybe. As you know a, what I mean? You've played and you're a fan. Yeah. Playing would be tough due to the contracts not being so big is the only thing I'd kick back on. Yeah. But as a fan and yeah. watching, I want it all. <laughs> For sure. How would it work though? If I've got a two year deal, does that mean I can be. So, so if you got, if you, if you, so mid season type stuff, you got a two year deal left, but they traded you. Yeah. Well, obviously that the, that means that team could either come up with a way to like void your next two. Right. So then you become a free agent at the end of the year. So you play out the, the rest of the year and you sign up a deal where you get like a bonus out of it or something like that. But then you have the option to become a like unrestricted free agent and then you get the choice of wherever you want to go after it's all said and done. Otherwise, if you're happy with um, the team that you've gone to and they're happy that they really want you to stay, well, you get your two years. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think and it's about- like, It's, it's going to take, it'd take a bit of work. Oh, Don't yeah. get me wrong. No, that's why, that's why the like- NFL is, uh, is where they're at. Like, it's going to take some work, but it's like- Things like that, that you could make it more interesting, right? Say, for instance, like you got a team, I don't know, like the Dons, like the, you know, last year, they're like, they're going all right. Maybe they're missing like one or two, like key thing that they could maybe get themselves after say like round 12 or 13 with 10 games to go and like, all right, maybe this is like, yeah. this is our guy that we can get to like, maybe take the next step top. So you'd call a guy just- that's probably- uh, a, a mature player dominating yeah. and he's got he's got a contract in front of him and they're like, we'll absorb that and yeah. we'll give you this guy. That's right. But it would work if managers and players signed off. 100%. So it'd be a scramble for a week. Basically. Um, you'd imagine, you'd, you know, it'd be a lot of drama posts because players would be like, we put you up mm. and we didn't get it and now you know we try to flog you off. Yeah. And now you've got to come back and buy in. Yeah. It's a different beast. Mm. It'd be brutal. It would be. But that, and that's that's the way the NFL is. I know, cutthroat. Like, way more money though. Way more, no doubt. That's so that's why, the, and that's the that's the difference. Like, don't know if it's possible, great. but it would be sick though. I think a lot of people want it, and a It'd lot of people sick. don't. It's a great yeah. topic. I don't know be where sick. I sit with it. Um, yeah, it's great though. <laughs> I mean, I know where I am when I'm playing at Peel Thunder yeah, and fucking sure. going all right. Yeah, fucking. When, when's this mid season? I'm ready to get <laughs> get me get me fucking get that's me out great. of here. See, hey? That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah but that's go. the thing. They don't want the fringe player, <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> they want the big dogs. So you'd be well, running around. Knows, there. Maybe if they get rid of the big dog, then the fringe player comes in for the oh, same team. You never I was know. Having a laugh, know? and um, <laughs> yeah. When I was in Arizona, Mikel Bridges was amazing. He scored 29 points. He led yeah. all comers. Yeah. Um, I met up with Jock Landau post game and yep. um, Cam Johnson come down and gave yep. me a fist pump. And I'm like, this is so surreal. Yeah. He's such a young gun. And, you know, like a week later, Durant's, <laughs> I think a week later, Durant's there. Yeah. And I just, I saw a tweet. It was like Bridges wrote, 
oh damn and yeah. they're like lol yeah. he's like and then they he come out a few weeks later and um he gets even funnier he goes well how did you find out and apparently one of his teammates facetimed him and said oh man i'm so I'm sorry so and he's what? like what are you talking about he goes you haven't seen twitter he's like nah he's like you've just oh, been shipped off for durant mate, and then it gets unreal. better that that, that's true i know like, that flat out happens um you wouldn't be able to sleep that week oh you wouldn't be able to sleep mate I don't imagine and NFL you've literally players. gone from West Coast to East Coast, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, With the fans. just and I get it. You have the money, like I get it. You do know you the have the financial different. setup and stuff, and you could, you can. It's there's no doubt. Yeah. So that's the tough thing. Like here, it's like people would be like, maybe if you're on 500 plus, you could do maybe. it. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's the cap. But that's a small. That's a that's a small. That's 200 a small, players or something. Small market compared to, yeah, mm. what you got there. It's, I don't know. It's funny. Then Mikael Bridges, the w first week he got interviewed from Nets, like, you know, the Instagram social yeah, media team. Yeah. And they said, um, okay, let's ask you a few questions. He's like, so who's your favorite player? And he like, just got, he went, he's like, no, he goes, who's your favorite player, favorite player growing up? And he's like, it was Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> It was that's Kevin Durant. That's outstanding. And he's like, leave it in. Yeah, oh, that's man. outstanding. He sounds like a ripper, but I love yeah. that. That would cause a lot of drama. 100%. Yeah, the mid-season, it's a great question. What a about pre- oh, So my one I wrote down was um, pre-game kit. I oh, love yeah. how you boys dress yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selfishly, I've got the Sunnies brand. I in. want you to wear them. Bring that in. But I just think how outdated the kits are. I've said this a lot of times on this podcast, and I wanted to bring it up with you. You've played AFL. You've yeah. worn your kit. You've got your sponsors on your chest. No one cares about you. You're going to take it straight off off the bus if you're traveling. Yeah. If you're rocking up to the game, you've got your bag on. Yeah. But it's a great way to grow small businesses, yeah. clothing brands, um, grow your own 100%. brand, do some fun stuff, some yeah. messaging. Travis Kelsey probably does it the best. Yep. Um, do you think it would work in AFL? No doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely would work. So many different styles and that out there that obviously the boys and that do. There'd be way more interest, like, as you said, like clothing, clothing brands wanting to like come in and get their, you know, 10 cents worth and stuff and say, here, here's a few things to get my stuff out. No doubt. I love it. It would make it, it would, it would be awesome. So I'm all for it. hundred yeah. percent. Get that in. Yeah. Love it. Love it. hundred percent. I love how you, you're on, <laughs> on the same page here. And the second one, Super Bowl halftime commercials. I think that AFL players don't feature in enough. I talk about AFL players because our background, but athletes in general, I think the USA does a great job with their commercials with yeah. athletes. And I think that's the second one. I reckon we need more commercials where the players, the, like the athletes, they mm. play like a dumb role or something yeah. funny. It's like a skit yeah. almost. Yeah. I reckon right. we need more of it. You're right. I think uh, to a certain degree, we've got to keep it like, you know, some of the NFL guys back home, like say for instance, uh, Baker Mayfield did it like, you know, is with an insurance company and he was with the Browns obviously. And like he did like eight different commercials it's like, like now look like, you know, yeah. you're a bit unlucky, mate. Like you're a bit unlucky, but it's just like how things turn oh, quickly, ever, you know? Yeah. So it's like to a certain extent, I get it. Like for sure, you should definitely get them involved, particularly on like the sense of humor ones. Like yeah. if you're trying to have a bit more of a laugh, but. Great way of putting it. And I actually cooked my question. Mine was Super Bowl halftime commercials, AFL grand final halftime commercials. Because we do. I don't know what kind of entertainment oh. we do for AFL, but I can't imagine it's at the standard of Rihanna. Nah. Do you think it would work? Halftime entertainment show, so like half, the halftime no, breaks so like longer? AFL like halftime, halftime commercials. Can it's the Australian advertising, marketing, uh, you know. Take some work. They've got, I mean, I definitely think you have the here. opportunity. Yeah, for sure. You'd only need 10. I mean, it doesn't yeah. mean that athletes are in. Would it work yeah. on an AFL grand final day? Or do we want to just hear from the... It just depends because the game's so different. Like, you don't get the stop-start, like, stuff. So, that's, like, obviously... What is halftime in NFL? Uh, so, normally, it's only 13 minutes, but it's 30 during the Super Bowl. But that's because AFL's of the performance. 20. But it's, like, yeah. it's more all the commercials that they have actually are on during the timeouts throughout the game. Yeah. So, it's not just, like, halftime, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you'd obviously have quarter time, like, three-quarter time and stuff. But you have a lot less time to actually do the yeah, well said. commercial side of things and do and do that type of stuff. So I think it could still work because you can do the quarter time, half time, three quarter time. But the reason why I guess the NFL stuff do so many is because all the timeouts that are involved with it too. Yes, yeah, so many. Because it's so like so stop start, particularly for the for the Super Bowl. 
they could do hundreds and hundreds if they want to. So, yeah, it would definitely work here, but you just wouldn't have like, I guess you wouldn't have as many. So, nah. which wouldn't be a bad thing, like yeah. for sure. I think you can make it work, but that's just how it is. Like, it's all just like one like huge, just like business. business. And it's a great business. And like, it's a great business. Absolute great business. And like the AFL is more still for the game, which is also awesome. Love that. Yeah. Different. But that's why it's, it's such, yeah. they're so different. And yeah. that's why I always, I always think the U S is everything's bigger and mm. better. Australia's the best country in the world. What can we bring from those sports? Yeah. Maybe we don't have to, I don't know. I just always, you always like it though. thinking on the run. Two out of the three are definitely, I'm all, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm normally a one from I'm three in. operators. So oh, I'll take good that. For you. 66% will take <laughs> it. I normally kick it 33%. <laughs> 66 is a, that's tick, mate. That's a, that's job uh, done. That'll get you out of pill thunder. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, all right, let's go to some Q and A from the Aces. Uh, I uh, I got some funny ones here and oh, some good here ones. Go. Um, righto, Liam Morrison. I haven't read these. I like to read them raw. Yeah, Liam Morrison. How did you? How did being on an AFL list prepare you for life on an NFL roster? Yeah, it's a good one. Um, I think in terms of just like the overall professionalism. So like you know you're a young kid going into a uh, very professional environment. You have to grow up pretty quickly. So I think just the able to transition into that and knowing that you've kind of been there before, not as not as high um, in terms of the sport and um, the occasion and all the things like that, but um, overall just being, yeah, in that professional setting and stuff, I think made the transition like pretty smoothly to be able to um, go over there and kind of, can, you know, do my thing and stuff. So um, good, very good question. I think definitely the AFL probably helped that just massively because you have to grow up pretty quickly in the AFL world, or otherwise they leave you behind pretty oh, quickly. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't hey, we know it? Oh yeah, definitely. And don't 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 be late to a meeting. That's okay. right. That's right. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> just on that, any like is, is it very strict? Because I know I've heard you say you're in the you're in the doors at seven thirty and you're out at nine p.m. I'd imagine you wouldn't want to be late to a meeting. Or yeah, no, nah, you would. You, you still want to you still want to be doing your due but, diligence and and being on top of things and yeah. you know getting in your meetings on time and and things like that. Just because yeah, it's there's, just poor. It's the last thing you want. Yeah, isn't it? it's not. It's just it's a it reflects poorly on you, so you just yeah. you just want to make sure you're on and time you are and like your it. own business because you got your basically own, it's just next man up. That's right. It? It's it's a big like your own your own brand and like things like that, making sure that you're on top of it because they just don't have. Have any you seen attention. anything like from, from even college? Have um, you seen anyone really cop it for being college was pretty college was pretty bad. Like because they try and they try and set the example for you. You've got seventeen year old kids that have been their best player at their high school and thinking that they are and they've been recruited like crazy, right? So. They've had 10 schools recruit them. They've picked where they've wanted to go. Yeah. They're like, happy days. Like, I've made it, da-da-da. And then they just become in for a rude awakening and the coaches are on them all the time because they all they see is in this recruiting process is that the coaches are loving them. Like, come to Auburn, come to Auburn. Yep. This is the best school, da-da-da. And then when they get there and they're done, coaches completely change because it's football. Yeah. So they're just like, Riding them. get your shit together. Um or he's going to be playing and you're not going to be playing type thing. Suck and they just, in. some of them can't handle it. Wow. So this transfer portal thing is you've probably heard about is just crazy because kids actually just can't handle it. Especially when they are doing press conferences. And they've got and more freedom now too to do it. But yeah, it's just- Picking hats and all yeah. that. It's, it is it is it's ridiculous. a luxury. That know, not whereas many the NFL is like, like that because you just get drafted to obviously where you go, which is what we're used to. Mm. And um, you just got to- you know, you should have learned those things already in college, so you should be able to transition easily over to, into the yeah. NFL for sure. Yeah, it's well put. Mm. Um, this is a great question. Ryan Gear underscore 32. Anyone in the AFL currently that you believe could have a chance in the NFL if they tried? It's a great question because, yeah, that's a good question. Um, again, such unique, like, Sports aren't they it's just different? Mm. But like someone could come in and probably play, maybe a tight end, maybe a wide receiver type thing. Um, Do you think an Aussie could play? Well, I don't think they at the moment. Which like, I haven't seen tough. anyone that's quick enough. It's tough. They're so quick. They're so quick. And tight ends, how 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 big Ta got tight out? ends? Like we're gonna we're gonna, like guys are gonna have to put on whoever's in the AFL have got to it. put on side size like so. Dallas is about 105, 110. 
110, that's all, that's heavy, that's big. And yeah. what, and so he weighs he? about 245, 250 how tall like, is he? pounds, and he's 6'5, six, 6'6. Six, six. Uh, and run and that. runs and runs a four five though four five four six forty yard dash. Yeah, yours That's is. Quick. I, I saw yours is five. five. He's and quick, and you're pretty quick as well. Oh, I wouldn't say that, but you're not slow. And you're six two. He's six five. Yeah, he he. All I can say is that. So you need he to be, moves. Yeah. Okay. Like if Paddy Dangerfield put on an extra twenty kilo, maybe, maybe, and he only right. maybe, and he's six two six three. Like he's my like maybe yeah. a bit taller. Yeah, I'm I like think. tough. Mm. What about kicking, punting? Like, oh, lots. Oh, lots. I think a lot could do it for sure. You don't think that? I mean, you did a lot of work. I did a lot of work to get to and all, college, and all, and all of it. All to, of it will take work for sure. How many years? But do you like, think? you know, I'm I'm still I'm still definitely like working on it. Definitely like working on it and like trying to build that consistency in that for sure. But um. I don't know who are the. Oh, I can't remember it's who hard. the big kicks like. Maybe you know what? Someone who's got a really nice kick that I think could actually make it work is um, Maynard from the Pies. Yep. I reckon he could. Be, yeah, I reckon he could make it work for sure. I think he's got a beautiful kick, and like he could transition well. I think from like getting himself if you want it. I reckon that's one guy that comes to mind. Matty Suckling good. finished up now. We Maddie always Suckling. thought that he might be, Suckers yeah, could do it. like Suckers is awesome, but he had that like- Yeah, he went on the yeah, left Bring foot. it out. Like the thing about like the punning the side thing is like you have to be so straight. still and oh, straight wow. that like, and we often we think that like we're so good at being creative and stuff and we can still get away with that. But like with the spiral itself and like being so still, it's like, Get it out there. Get it out there. Don't like roll it over because that will leave you in a in a little bit of trouble. So it's sure. actually stay straight yes. still. Yeah. And yeah. and you're pushing your hand forward and just keep yep. your leg comes up, doesn't yep. it? Such a Yeah, it's so different. So how so flexible different. are you? You're really flexible. Yeah, I've got way better at my flexibility since I've started, like since I've done the punting side of things, mm -hmm. just like all the exercises that I do. Like hamstrings used to be so tight when I yeah. played. Oh mate, I can't and even stuff, touch. but now they're yeah. Now they're good. Yeah. They're well, you have good. to be. You have to be. I've got no choice. You know, you kick yourself hips, in the snout. Hips and hips and the hammies and that are a huge part in it for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got more questions, but just rehab like physios, AFL, um, you know, and NFL. Are there way more on offer at NFL? Like you just chiros, yeah. everything. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Way more, way more things. A lot more in the NFL. Like specialize at certain things. Right. So some people that like, uh that can do some things, can't do others. So like they have it all, like chiropractors, um, massage, trainers, physios, like doctors, each have their own like specialty, if that makes sense. Whereas I feel like in the AFL, our physiotherapists can basically do everything. Yeah, they're guns. Unbelievable. Three jobs in one. Their knowledge is incredible. They know what they need to do. Whereas like- we need to special like in the NFL, you need to specialize a little bit more, if that makes sense. More more people there to be able to do that. So it's but not, that's the reason why. So it's not clogged yeah. up. If you want a massage, you can go get one. Hundred percent. No, like, oh fuck, I've got to wait till three thirty slot. Yeah. So it's like whatever you want. Basically. On the on ready to go, they'll be there available for you to And get the it recovery done. side of things, the pools, the saunas, everything yeah. there. Philly Philly's not great. In terms of the whole, like, their setup, but they have everything there ready for yeah. you to go. And you're so, comparing to the new obvi latest. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, nah, it's good insight. No, nah, it's good. It's good insight. It's, it's fascinating. You said a lot of Aussies mm. can do it. Um, this is a good question. Maxi Dean, what keeps you calm? Um, what helps you calm down in high pressure situations? Is there anything that any cues that you go to? Yeah, it's a good one. Um, for me, for me, like I always just kind of, when I'm going out there in the moment and things like that, it's just like all the things that you, you're basically just like honing in on what you've done before, if that makes sense, you know, um, I don't necessarily have a word or anything like that to like kind of calm myself down and stuff because, um, I try to like be in the moment as as best I possibly can. So I don't like saying a word to myself pre because then I start, then I start to think that like, Oh, I'm thinking about too much or I'm thinking about too much. So I just like, I just go back to basically just like all the things that I've already done before and just go out there and, and execute. So, um, if there's one, if there's one thing that just like would come out to me, is just making sure that I'm just like, you know, still, still, 
Like still, that's if anything, yeah. that's kind of like my little cue to just make sure. Because then, then I know that like everything's like tight, like tight as in like in the right spot. So therefore, I can like go and execute my job. And you know, sometimes when I actually don't do it, it's yeah. Sometimes you know that's where it's like things can go wrong. You know, yeah. so like I just like need to keep you know still getting back that and, and saying that to myself. Coffees and frothies. Do you have Kevin Hart's mobile number? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Obviously, I uh, don't, but I really wish yeah, I did. Yeah, you need to find. Yeah, really. actually that would, that would be awesome. When um, there's a photo, I think Embiid come down. And do you knock around with the Sixers boys? Not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot. Go to like, any games? Or? I go to I go to a few games. That's yeah, awesome. big time. Like I, you know, I love you my I love my bas- I love my basketball, and obviously finals will be on and stuff like that. So again, crowd will be pretty electric and stuff. So I'll definitely try and get my definitely try and get in there. But I, I went to the um. I went to the uh, championship game when the Phillies played San Diego, like in the to win the uh, their the uh, I think it's they're in the National League. So um, yeah, did that too. So yeah, it's good. We definitely try and get around it. That's, that's for great. sure. And obviously, all those boys trying to go to our games and that yeah, as well. That's what I was saying. Embiid yeah. was uh, Kevin Hart. I remember there's a photo of Kevin Hart and Embiid yeah. next to each other. Hilarious, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah, Just, unbelievable. He, he makes so good. So many people laugh. So good. You mo- uh who we got here? Bitter hey, bitter hell are you? What an Instagram handle that is. Your most important advice for a young Aussie switching from AFL to punting? It's a great question. Yeah, Dan. it's good. Um, I think it's just kind of what I said before, just like hone in on making sure that you are nice and still when you're when you're kicking that ball. It, I think that's the honestly the most important thing because we are we are so good at being able to kick around our bodies, so therefore the ball can be in different spots for us. But if you're just focusing on just the spiral work and wanting to work on that torpedo and stuff, it's just about making sure that you firstly the ball's like out there. So don't be cramped up, like have the faith to be able to get the ball out and just keeping it nice and still over whichever foot or leg is your dominant leg, yeah. you know, just making sure that that's what you want to be focused on. And a good way to do that is by looking into a mirror, honestly, and you're just focusing on the ball drop and then just seeing it to make sure it's over that leg that's your dominant leg and and doing that. Great advice. A lot of times throughout the throughout the week. Yeah. So it's, a, yeah. That's like your skill. That's like basically your, that's you know, your that's your fifteen minutes of handball and yeah, stuff like that you're getting your hot hands yeah. in development. That's what that that's what I do. Yeah. Love it. Um, how do you handle the cutthroat, long term, unknown nature of the sport? Yeah, that's a that's a very very good question. From Phil and B, on, I still am I still am trying to like figure it out. Like the thought of the thought of literally getting a call at any moment. In all honesty, and like them saying, hey. You know, like we appreciate everything, but we're going to go with someone else and stuff at any time. And then knowing that that's it, that they don't owe you anything, nothing is pretty scary. And it's like kind of at the back of your mind a little bit, you know, of course, but at the same time, you can't let it, um, you know, get to you that much because in the end there's a job, at, there's a job at a task and a job at hand, I should say. And, um, you just got to go out there and just do your thing and execute. And if you do that, then you don't have to worry about, you know, the first yeah. part that I said. And it sounds simple. It isn't always that simple. It's hard when you start to make a few mistakes. For like sure. I, I noticed I never, sure. ever, ever, ever like noticed about the external noise until yeah. I started making a few Barneys and For then, sure. and then you make a couple more and cause, sure. because your mind, and that's where the, you it get, throws you off, but that's where you got your psychologist, yep. your yep. specialist yep. all around sure. to, um, to kind of yep. work on those. It can skills. drive you too. Like for me and honestly, as more maturity comes around, like it's kind of driven me like mm. to be like, I know that's my situation. But let's be better. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I can be the best that I can. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're going to get it right every time. Mm. And like the way social media works and things like that, it's like they expect you to be that, whatever. But you just got to know the like for yourself and then internally it's like, okay, no one's perfect. You know, you're not going to get it right. But what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do next time to make sure like it kind of doesn't happen? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's so, great advice. Get straight yeah. into actions. Don't yeah. worry about Exactly. Words, just get to work. For sure. Ask him if he's ever broke somebody's arm. <laughs> I don't oh, think so. I don't know why. That, that, <laughs> I don't, from Khan. I, I, don't, I just read that off the top. Um, do I, you, I don't know. I don't know. I thought that might have been one of your mates. Maybe I did. Maybe. Maybe. I've I got know. no idea. He, he used to be a weapon on the field, <laughs> I can tell you. Um, do you. Do you miss Charlie Hicks? I think I did. I actually have. I, remember, I, know, I, know, who's, I know who sent that. 
Khan. Yeah, I know who did. I can't read his Instagram. No, I know who it is. I, I, I was I was a buddy with uh, my mate. He's called Steely, and this was back out where I grew up. And his little brother is called Khan. This must be him, and that's him for sure. How do you say? And his we're last on name? our tra- we're on a trampoline. He was a lot younger back then, and uh, well, like he was wrestling, you know, like <laughs> fucking elimination chamber oh, type yeah. stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I did like a suplex move on him and stuff. And- <laughs> Yeah, broke the little kid's arm. I think he may have been about seven or eight. At the oh, time. mate, so that's dude. great. So, to answer his question, yeah, I yeah, did. I did. <laughs> and, and you lost that fight as well. <laughs> we love it. So man. good. That is so good. I, I read it, and I'm glad I read it now because yeah. it does not make. Now any I had sense. to rejog my memory, but yes, he's he's right. And then Khan, if good you're one, out there Khan. listening, uh, <laughs> hope your arms recovered, yeah. big fella. <laughs> hope it wasn't your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Hicks, do you miss coaching the Mighty Magoos at Brighton Grammar oh, and the George Cats? Oh, good old Charlie. Yeah, no, that's great. No, I do. I do. That was that was my little gig that was going on before I went over to to America. So, um, yeah, I was trying to take over from the great Rob Shaw and maybe get the old get the get the Brighton Grammar job after at some point. But uh, uh, that's definitely something that I want to focus on. You know, do when I'm when I get back. Yeah. You know, I still have a passion. I still have a passion for AFL football. Uh, I'm still trying to keep an eye on as best as I possibly can and being able to get back into the coaching sector would be good. Yeah, I think you do really well. Um, and I always think players that have, you know, had a probably tougher, you mm. know what I mean? You've seen both sides. You yeah. understand the locker room a yeah. bit more. I think they always do well. Yeah, Plus all the uh, experiences you've had. Um, ask him if he misses coaching Halem Secondary School. Yeah, How yeah. many schools did you coach? I did a couple. They're the two. I, I went to Halem actually in part of their football program there. So year 11 and 12. And okay, that's how I got one. the Stingrays gig. So yeah. What, what's, a better, what's a better program? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, they'll be filthy with whoever you yeah, leave out here. You've put me in a pickle here, haven't oh, you? Let's, yeah. not, let's not yeah, go there. No, we'll that's, leave it. We'll I'm leave not it. about that. I'm not about that. Here we go. Lionel Burns <laughs> goes, who's got the biggest <laughs> snag at the Eagles? <laughs> it's got to be Big Coxie, doesn't it? Big Coxie. Gee, gee. <laughs> Fuck That's up. great. Oh, they had that question had to be asked. There's no doubt. Oh, uh, that is fucking. I'm funny. not answering that question. No, no, don't way. answer it. Nah, I just wanted to ask nah, it. Nah, it's a good one, though. And it was actually who has the biggest, and they used the eggplant emoji. Love it. Just <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Very good, Lionel. Very good. <laughs> Who's the scariest eagle to share with? Here we go, Benny. <laughs> The boys love this question. <laughs> what is what is it with us Australians and just loving the shower and blokes, all together? And blokes asking Seriously. who's got the biggest isn't, sausage. Isn't that just like football culture too? It's absolute It's max. like messaging your mate who's playing in yeah. a, a Super Bowl. Um, not, mate, good luck, but what yeah, colour is the Gatorade? What colour is the Gatorade? Yeah, <laughs> nah, it's good. Phenomenal. What has been your best pun of your NFL career? It's from Charlie Norts, but I want to know the answer to that and AFL. Okay, so. Longest kick and punt. AFL. Um, I think it was my first game. I was inside the center square and I let one like rip and it was a bit like low, but I just like, it just sailed. And it was my first game of AFL football and I hit it from about 65 and it oh, went through. It was, it, it was nice. That was nice. Uh, I had a, I had a couple that were like outside 50 and that they were on the run and that were pretty good. So I enjoyed them. Um, VFL, I, I did have a bit of a nice breeze behind me, but I played in, Port Melbourne at Willie, and I reckon I was that was probably like 75, 80 in wow. the air with a not with a very nice breeze like behind yeah. me, but still Smart. got onto it. It was it was pretty handy. And then in the NFL, I've had my best one. So my longest of my career is sixty eight yards. I saw that online. Um, so I've hit, I, that ended up going for a touchback. So you never obviously want that, but. Still, 68 yards and getting for a touchback, I can't really complain Did about. But like, sorry, coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not going to worry about it too much. <laughs> but my best one I hit was 65 in the air and, like, just hit the point and just bounced sideways out of bounds at the five-yard line. Oh, and I was man. like, Yeah. That I did not mean that at all, but that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. So yeah, that's that probably is, my best. That's probably the best one that, that I've had. A big, yeah. That's a big bomb. Yeah, I'll take that one for sure. How, how, like, how? Kicking both balls, like, is it of AFL? Obviously, it's bigger, but can you kick? Which one can you kick further? Probably the AFL one. AFL, yeah. So no breeze. You no AFL. breeze. Probably you could kick just because it's a bigger, sweeter spot. Yeah. So you just you just allows you to be able to hit it a lot more cleaner, and probably therefore, yeah, it would yep. go a lot further. Great questions there from Charlie Norts and Singy, obviously. Yeah. Well, Sam Cullen, favorite post game meal. Does it really matter? Is it in your like? Do you have to be as elite? Nah, not really. So favorite, can't you tell? 
I think you're, well, <laughs> we'll see how your golf game is. That's yeah, the, that's yeah, what yeah, I we'll hear. A lot, of, a lot of you guys yeah. just play golf. Is the rumor? Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I'm all, I'm I'm a big fan of like yeah, like some fried chicken, like chicken tenders type thing. Hot that, sauce? That. You love your hot sauce? I'm um, not much of a hot sauce. I'm definitely more of like a honey barbecue type guy okay. for sure. Yeah, so that's the way I'd go. There you go, the yeah. tenders. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. Chris Luff, biggest barrel ever kicked during AFL. We just spoke about that. Yep. A few more questions here to go. Oh, I forgot to ask, and this is great. A reminder from Liam Morrison. Is he good mates with fellow Aussie Jordan Mailata? What's it like playing with the big fella? Awesome. He is a specimen, yeah. and um, I know you're good mates. Describe yeah. the relationship. He's awesome. He's like, he's just a larrikin, like just your typical. typical like Australian dude that would love a beer and just, you know, has a great time. He's a Polynesian, got Polynesian background. So a uh, large family. And I met them actually uh, after we lost in the Super Bowl. And mate, like time of my life, just singing, just singing Jimmy Barnes, like Kaysan and stuff. And just like, you don't get that stuff from any of the Americans there. So having them there was just unreal. So like, good. So good. But uh, I've got, we're going to his wedding in July. He's getting married in July. So that's going to be, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, and just, just build a spe like build a special like relationship. And um, we, we sat next to each other when there was about 40 seconds left in the game, knowing what was about to happen. And we we just looked at each other and like, damn, like, mm. and we'd spoken about it the whole week. Just like, we're we going to do it. Like we're going to, we're going to be one and two, whichever way, however they, they want to do it, however they, they want to say it, like we're going to be, we're going to do it. And then just sit next to him and it was just like, man, sucks. Yeah. Like hurts so much. And, uh, you know, obviously that's like a bit of a, like a, you know, a bit of a sob story and stuff, but I think that's like what I'm trying to get at, just the bond that we've created in the two years that like I've been there. And, um, yeah, just uh, it's so good to have a like a familiar accent, obviously, in the room, and like the, just the 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 lingo that you have, and the and the banter that goes on that only us two can really yeah. know. And we're we're losing our shit in like of things that we say to each other and stuff, and you know the other boys in the locker room just like what the fuck's going yeah. on right now, and you know I, well, we couldn't give two shits because he's just that's just the way it is, and I oh, absolutely love it, but uh. Plenty of time for that man, and uh, definitely will be a long life friend for oh, sure. That's special, it's mate. Great. It's great to hear. Yeah, it's it's awesome. exactly what we all wanted yeah. to hear as well. And yeah, it's awesome. He um he has got a great voice, doesn't he? Unbelievable, like unbelievable, it, like really good, really good. Yeah, I think did that mass singer stuff or yeah. whatever. I don't know if we have that here, but nah, I saw it online. Yeah, it's like a big thing that they do over there, and uh, yeah, he was he was legit. He's got a great voice. Yeah, great, great voice. voice. Yeah. I think Jason. Gets his guitar out all the time and just in plays his music and yeah, he's unreal. That's unbelievable. Unreal. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> uh, it's great to hear. It's and it's, it's a special bond, you yeah. know. Like you got the big man and the, and the little man in terms of like the frame because sure. he's a big boy. He's isn't huge. He? He's uh, 166 kilos and six foot ten. What? Yeah, 166. Yeah, and six ten. Yeah, and moves. What was Aaron Sandilands? He was he was six. Wasn't he seven foot? He was seven foot and one hundred and twelve. Fifteen, I reckon. One hundred and fifteen. Just think of that, but like plus an extra fifty kilo. Oh and, but, my but god! But like is faster than like Sandilands, like way faster. Explosive, yeah. Big Spod could run. We used to, it was a clip could of him he, running. He could there. Get going. Oh, we always laugh because he used to. Yeah, right. There's a clip of him running down the wing. Yeah, and he took right. like three That's bounces. Right. And I think bike. I actually remember it. And I'm like, what happened? He goes, I don't know, man. I went for a third and <laughs> went through me, went through his legs or something. <laughs> and I used to always get into him. Flat spot in the pitch. So like, we, we used to call each other the barrel because I got a bit of a barrel, like a tiny barrel chest, and he's got a massive one. I go barrel. <laughs> I go <laughs> barrel. Get the ball and just take off. <laughs> so good. Um, but so that's good. unbelievable. So he's like yeah. 40 kilos heavier than Spod. Just Sandilands. Fuck hell. Monster of a man. You can see why no one can get to the quarterback. No, especially on that left side. They're not getting in. Well, even on the right side, they both don't allow anything. So good. Crazy. Awesome to hear, mate. Awesome to hear. A couple more questions. I want to hold yeah. you up. We've got two more segments, but the best and worst city to play in um, outside of Philly. Clearly, that's your favorite. No, I hate the Giants. I hate the Giants. So I probably don't like that. Um, any other places? Where do you stay? Do you stay in New York? Because I know they're out in no, Jersey. We're in. We stay in Jersey City, which is a nice little area. Yeah, like it's actually not bad at all. Um, and then obviously they're like out, like yeah. a bit further in the Meadowlands, is what they call it. But uh, yeah, that's probably the one that comes to mind pretty quickly. Washington's not a great. Like their stadiums, like it looks old school, old, it's a bit like Green Bay, very done, old and done for. But classic. like Green Bay is like. 
Green Bay is like a classic Special. old, and they keep it in great like Nick for sure. I don't know about I don't know about Washington. Yeah. They've got some work to do. Just put all the players, yeah, all the just, teams in the East. Work. They've just got some work to do. There's a lot of there's a lot of talent in the East, by the way. Your division. Mm. Wow. Yeah. A great question there from uh, Riley Bockel. Oh, um, what else we got? Oh, here's a great question. It probably leads us in. Uh, again, everyone that writes in, um, appreciate all your qu questions. They're, they're really good. I'd ask them all. There's another 20, so we're going to stop here after this one. <laughs> but uh, your favorite hole at Southern Golf Course, mate, from um, <laughs> underscore the, the Luke, the luck. It's your local? Yeah, yeah. I've got a I've I've got a little membership there. So it's nice to be able to come back and just go to a place knowing that I can jump on any time I like, which is pretty good. So my favorite hole at at Southern. Yeah. Um there's a nice little short par four, like the 15th, I think it is. 15th? And you can be really aggressive if you want to. Um, but can also cause you a little bit of trouble if you're if you don't get off the tee very I well. I slice it right hand. Does it help me? Nah. Oh, so it's going left. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm in trouble. Yeah. And I will, we'll find out in you'll a week. Find, you will find out yeah. in a week. So that'll be interesting. We're, we're, well, I'll be wearing my clutch and coat, <laughs> hat and premium kit. They've got the new polo. Yeah. Did you send me the new um, two Apollos? Yeah, they're good. Very good. What, they're good. blue, red? Which one yeah, did you get? Like the the yeah. stripy one, like, you know, you're kind of, I feel like it's like a lightish kind of pink kind of color. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what Dummy's called. But He's, they're good though. Great. They're very great. Yeah. Tried it on, fit really good, nice and light, perfect. People think that so, I come on in here, pay, that I, I say, because I say it's the cheapest golf product on the market. It should be 129 bucks. He's, he's flogging them for like 79 yeah, he's 99 doing, doing well. And you know the best part as well? He's got a discount code, ACES, wow. that we always leave on. And I haven't done it. We're doing a master show coming up. But um, yeah, anyone that wants yeah, golf jump kit, on. clutch and co, jump dot com dot au. Get on um, there because I I am totally with it. It's uh it's it's great stuff. And great a lot of stuff. the boys play golf. Uh yeah, Jake Jake Elliott plays a lot. He's off scratch, so he's wow. pretty good. Where are you off? Uh, I'm off ten right now. Okay, so I've got some work to do, but I can't complain at the same time. Um, so yeah, no, nah, Jake's pretty good. Yeah, a couple of guys here and there and stuff, but I try and get out with him as much as I possibly can. It's always can. good playing so, with yeah. someone that's a bit. For sure, you. for sure, for sure. Helps your game, and they and they. He, he's pretty good about it. Like he he definitely helps me out a little bit with my game too. Little small things not to work on. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's That's good. the golfing part. Love getting out there. It's a it's a great game, golf. It is. Now let's go to our last two segments, mate. You've been enormous, and 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 I can't thank you enough for coming on the on the potty. You don't come on here empty handed, mate. We've. <laughs> We've got a couple of prize packs here. We'll start with um, our friends here from Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee Tools. They are, uh, yeah, we've got you the lifestyle power pack here, mate. So, um, you know, this has everything inside. It's got the pruning and saw, pruning saw and contractor bag. You've got the uh, LED lantern floodlight, the compact blower, the AMP batteries and a charger. Um, so if you are simply heading to the outdoors, you're going to go camping or fishing or anywhere, it. mate, just uh, over the next month month or so when you're in Aussie, yeah. you know, I think we've got a bit more sun left oh, in Melbourne, yeah, don't we? Do we have a little bit more. I've got, I've got some hedges that I might need to cut pretty soon, oh, actually. Well, so mate, maybe we're on. You're on. You're on right here because <laughs> Milwaukee Tools have got you sorted. Oh, yeah. The lifestyle pack. <laughs> and they've been very good. So big shout out to them. Um, thank you for the uh, to Milwaukee for supplying this. Mate, our segment here with our friends here from Milwaukee uh, is – who is the biggest tool in the locker room <laughs> at Philadelphia Eagles? Now, I always try and fray it's a it's a good tool. It's a it's a You reckon it, it's a good tool? It's a it's a okay. it's, it's a tool that's driven to our performance. Like a, like a jack of all trades type thing thing like tool or someone we, or the way we, I think of a tool is someone that I oh, look at them and they make me laugh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, which no, has nothing to do with Milwaukee tools. No, 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 that's that's, that's yeah, that's good. Uh, but yeah. true, and your handiest teammate. So someone with the tools, it's very handy. It's a real shame that I actually can't answer this question a little bit easier or a little bit quicker. Well, that's fine because um, we, we can always narrow it to yeah. one. Who's the Energizer Bunny in the locker room? Who's oh, the guy? That makes for sure, uh, Darius Slay. He just uh, just doesn't stop. Like just doesn't stop. Just whether it's talking, whether he's just running around doing something like, yeah, he's just he just keeps going the whole time. Speaks really far, so you can't really understand what he's saying. But uh, energy all the time, Brilliant. all the time. That is, you yeah. need that. You need it. Like sometimes it can be a bit too much. And you just want him <laughs> to shut the fuck up. But <laughs> at other times, when you you actually do need it to get yourself going, he's definitely the guy to 
give you a quick little laugh and say, all right, let, let, let's get into it. So he's definitely the one that comes to mind pretty quickly for that one. Oh, that's a big sure. name. That's a big name. Well, there you go. We're going to have to send him a Milwaukee yeah, Tools lifestyle pack. He'll never use it, but you might have to. <laughs> I would have thought Jason Kelsey would be pretty handy. He, I, think he, I think he is. Like, I think he is, but- um. The boys wouldn't be, they'd be paying for their they, they, You Renos. know how it is. Like, you know, guys like that would just have a business come along and just say, hey, do this, do this and this and it, they're done. Yeah. They don't have to touch the tools themselves. Like, no. that's just how it is. Lane Johnson actually, I think would be really good. He's one that actually comes to mind actually now that I've thought about it. He would be, he'd be very good at that stuff. He's a good old country lad, like from Oklahoma and stuff. So he would love that shit. Yeah, there you go. There you go. The Milwaukee Tools, yeah. handiest uh, player, the Philly Eagles yeah. would be Lane Johnson. Yes. And uh, and yeah. Slay. Slay. Darius. Darius? Darius. Darius. Darius Slay yeah. is the locker room. Yeah. Fun tool. Yep. Uh, I need to reframe that one because people <laughs> probably think that we're talking <laughs> bad, but we love it. We love it. <laughs> now, mate, we've got the brand uh, new uh, Rick's Eyewear here. I wasn't sure what to go with. I thought for you, you know, I know your style because you got the black hair. Yeah. Um, we'll give you the... The Melrose that are just restocked, the Dark Storm, it's green polarized. Watch out. Um, so these are for you, my friend. Yeah, look at them go. Um, these will be, you know, you'll be rocking these Jeez. in the Super Bowl next year, yeah, I reckon. Look at them go. Um the old mate, Melrose. Yeah, the Melrose. And back in stock, the last time. We, oh yeah. I reckon they look pretty good. Every time I mm. every time you ask me though, I, I thought you're, this, you're always gonna say they yeah, do look no, great. I think they go right on me. Um, they actually fit my head real good too. I really struggle with the with the sunnies sometimes, yeah. Melrose right. number one and two with the orbits, um, they they fit everyone. Yeah. I know Griffin Lowe got the big beak. Yeah, they fit over the. I don't know what it is with I the like style. Them. They're good. They're uh, comfy too. They you are. need me to keep them on for this segment, or keep them on while right. you answer this one. All right. So, this is our last segment, brother. This is our last segment, and uh, I know it's about to be summer when you go back. Yeah, it'll be warming up, right? Yeah. But um, this is called Rickson retirement. This is when. When Sip, you've finished your career, you've won uh, as many Super Bowls as possible. You've done all the halftime commercials. You're cashed up. We always say you got all the cash in the world, right? So we want to know where you would take your ricks and retire, and why. That's awesome. Uh, I'll definitely, um, you know, as a, as a bit of a novelty in terms, of if I wasn't coming back to Australia straight away, I'd love to go spend like a week or two in the Maldives. Yep. And just like reminisce on your career, how like how good was that type thing? So I'd spend like one or two weeks, beautiful ocean, nothing to look about, and those beautiful like huts that they have all to yourself. That's what I'd do. And then afterwards, I'd just be simply coming back home here and enjoying life as a as a dad. Um, Maybe getting back into maybe getting back into as I said into some coaching and, and teaching stuff, but very very hopefully low key, and um, playing a shit ton of golf. Oh, <laughs> that is a great. I like These it. Be good out in the course, <laughs> I reckon. Got the yeah, yeah. he's got the Rixie. Look at it. You'll see me this on next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you hit the ball as much as far as you kick it? Like, are you are you a monster? Oh, I don't know. Tee? In all honesty, with the shot, like with the shoulders that I've had, like the Ricos that I've had, I don't know. Like, I don't have like the range and stuff, but I can still give it a good shake up. Yeah, off the tee. How far? Off the tee. Off the tee. I can. Off the tee. I can hit three hundred. Oh, you're a so you geez, you're smoking so, them. So I can I can do it with the clutch hat on. You'd hit it three times. I tell you what, I might get a little bit extra in there this time. You know, I might feel might feel real good. Bit of bit of extra energy on there. Oh, but the yeah. tour follows, Tommy. I can hit him all right. I can hit him all right. Yeah, it's just that uh, I think it's putting. Yeah, I think it's putting. Isn't it for everyone? Not for me. Because I, I, I so really you, you could go out to play scramble with. I'm stuff. amazing with Ambrose. I mean, I don't know if you wow. saw, I put a, a video out the other day. It was my first putt in in All two right. months, and I fluked it. But wow. the thing is, I'm a bit of a bandit because I don't play much. Yeah. Okay. But I just I'm better than my handicap. So yeah. if you're playing Ambrose, call me. All right. I'm All a right. bandit. That's I'll good come to know. in. I'll play uh, a couple of really good shots and some stinkers. But you don't need That's me okay. for that. Okay, Ambrose, you don't really need that. Someone no. else can do it for you, and then no. you just have the last part and get the real good read, yeah. and away you go. Playing with blokes like you have to tee, you need to take a couple. So mm. I just need to I just need to smoke That's a fine. few. I can make it work. Get rid of my vanilla slice. I'm gonna I am gonna I'm gonna drive so poorly now. 
Oh no, we're talking it up. We're I'm talking myself I'm, down I'm, so I'm, I can really. I'm going to drive so poorly now. Now that we've said that, I'm 300. Real, I'm, he's come out I'm publicly. In real, I'm in real trouble. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sore shoulder. Um, got the Rico, uh, and I can only hit I 300. Up a, I did up a body earlier, boys. <laughs> like, it's not, I just don't have that range of motion in me. Oh mate, Let's so go. where in Melbourne is the Rickson retiring again? What like like what area is oh, it? Oh, would love or? to be Bayside. Bayside, yeah, yeah, Bayside. Bayside's my go-to. I'd love to be able to just kind of be in the. Uh, Oh, you know, ideally, I'd love to be in the Black Rock like area. Oh, that yeah. would be that'd be unreal, and Great just spot. just live near the beach, um, walk down to like little cafes and stuff like that, and you know, that's the ultimate dream. Whether or not you have it is another thing. But yeah. hey, we're all at a wish. Yeah, you got to you got to you know, dream big. You know, think you got You got to do it. So that's how the re- that's how the retired life would look like. Just a nice little place in Black Rock, and I get to walk down to the the, the, the cafes there and. Be nice and relaxed about everything. Oh, Should be good in the Melrose storm, basically. Bang! That's, no, that's that is awesome, mate. I, I um I can't thank you enough. You've been awesome to catch up with. It's been, as I said to you, you're inspiring a lot of Aussies. Yeah, it's so much fun watching Aussies play. Um, and what you guys achieved this year was unbelievable. So, congratulations again. Um, thank you so much for jumping on awesome. uh, the potty. I, I know everyone you guys was having me on. really excited to hear a few of your um your stories and questions and mate you're still here for another month so you know what we might even get you back on for something else hey why not maybe just a little preview into what's going to happen next year oh that's it tell them exactly (laughs) tell them exactly what's going to happen I'll write the script for you brilliant and everyone else out there if you need a pair of sunnies the Melrose Storm are now restocked Sip loves them Uh, they definitely look great on the uh, the great man and uh, we have 20% off and free express shipping if you use the discount code ACES so you're getting looked after there. Sunny's golf kit, Milwaukee tools. It's all happening, brother. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. Thanks for listening to another episode of Tommy Talks, where you literally can't thank you enough for all your support. Speaking of support, our great mates, Milwaukee tools. Without yours, we wouldn't be here. Milwaukee Outdoor Power Equipment gives you the power to clear, cut, and maintain the outdoors without the petrol headaches. No pull starts, no engine maintenance, no mixing petrol and oil. Book a test drive now at milwaukeetools.com.au. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. All right, catch you on the next one.